watching Spectrum News One. The 2023 OHSAA Championship Weekend kicks off with a rivalry renewed in Division Two. Helmet and Maslin, they met for the state title twice already. The Knights have hoisted the hardware in both 2018 and 2020. Can Hoban's dominating defense make it another real strong night against Maslin and win their sixth state championship in school history? Or will the Tigers dual threat quarterback DeWan Owens lead Maslin's high octane offense to their first state title since a playoff system debuted in 1972. It's the Division II state title game. The championship decided right here, right now, on Spectrum News 1. This Division II state championship game is brought to you by Baldwin Wallace. What a scene this is inside Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium in Canton, Ohio. What a way to kick off a glorious championship weekend. The two Division II behemoths, the Hoban Knights, and uh, of course as well, the irresistible force of the Massillon Tigers. All right, there you see how they both got here in their semifinal wins. Massillon rolled, and Hoban had a huge second half to beat Avon. Great to see you, everybody. Delighted you're here. Michael Regai alongside my partner, Ryan Cavanaugh. Ashley Collins is going to jo join us momentarily. Ryan, look, I mean, if you're a football fan, not just in the state of Ohio, but everywhere, you know all about these two premier programs that decided D2 title tonight. Michael, this is the matchup everybody wants to see in the weekend. They want to see it. What a way to kick off championship weekend for 2023. Head coach for Hoban, Tim Terrell, said it best. This is the high school version of Michigan and Ohio State. We're going to see about 15 Division I athletes. I can't wait. Well, there's no more dominant defense in the state of Ohio than this Hoban Knight defense. Now, Ryan, they only give up seven points per game, and they're going to come at you from all three levels and create havoc. That's the way to you do it. I mean, they've played a national schedule and to hold teams to this little amount, you have to have three levels to sustain that. Don't throw, don't run. The Hoban Knights are going to smack you. Well, they're going to have to smack because uh, this Massillon of the Tigers offense is tremendous. They average better than 40 points per game this year, 42 points per game in the playoffs, and they've got big time playmakers all over the football field. So you're saying they're getting better as the playoffs go on. Uh -huh. that, is, that is not good for opponents. You, they have speed on the outside. They have a real playmaker in Dewan Owens. We're going to be talking about him all night. But this is a dangerous offense hanging 40-plus points. This is best on best. That's what you want in a championship. No question about it. All right, you started to mention those. Let's take a look at our stars to watch. And we begin with Hoban's uh, Elbert Rock Hill. He's been uh, just absolutely phenomenal this year. And, of course, Dewan Owens for mess. Well, he is the rock of the team, Elbert Hill. He scored almost every single way you possibly could on a football field. He's a lockdown corner with elite level speed. And for Dewan Owens, a true dual threat, 33 combined touchdowns, and the lefty can sling it. One of the most dynamic quarterbacks in the entire state. You're going to love seeing these two athletes as well as their teammates tonight. Our stars to watch, brought to you by the good folks at Akron Children's. All right, coming up next, we're going to dig you even deeper into this historical matchup. Division II championship decided. Ashley Collins will join us to set up the kickoff. That's next. Your evening on Spectrum News 1 is Ohio's source for local news that matters to you. We bring new perspectives and in-depth coverage of the day's biggest stories. We're here for you, sharing stories that inspire with news that keeps you informed and prepared for your tomorrow. Plus, our weather experts bring you your latest accurate neighborhood forecast every 10 minutes with our weather on the ones. Watch your evening on Spectrum News 1 weeknights starting at 4. Spectrum business is made to work just like your small business. Made to overcommit and overcome. Made to log in and ship out. Made to streamline productivity. 
Made to reassess, readapt, then relaunch. And made to do it all with fast, easy to use, ultra reliable internet, phone, and mobile services. All working together to connect every aspect of your business. We sold out in an hour. Nice work. You navigate one challenge after another. So you need a seamless network made to do the same. Spectrum Business, made to work. When I never graduated from high school, I realized I wanted to go back to school because I didn't want to work these backbreaking jobs the rest of my life. With the help of my father and having my son, that was all the motivation that I needed to come back to school. I felt accomplished, it made me feel that I could take on whatever challenges life throws at you. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Weather can be beautiful, inconvenient, and at times, powerful. And it affects everything we do. At Spectrum News One, our weather experts update you with the information and the context you need so you can better plan your day. And we do it every 10 minutes. We're the calm in the storm. Weather on the ones on Spectrum News One, exclusively on Spectrum. And get your weather anytime on the new Spectrum News app. The OHS AA Football State Championships are presented in part by the Spectrum News app, your community connection for news, weather, and live games. Download from mobile, Apple TV, and Roku today. By Baldwin Wallace University, a confident choice for exceptional learning. Learn more at bw.edu. And by Spectrum Mobile. Get unlimited data for $29.99 per line. Join the millions that have already switched and you could save big each month. An electrifying evening ready to start at Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium here in Canton, Ohio. As you take a look at the Hoven Knights from the uh, city of Akron, and of course, not far from the Knight campus, the Massillon Tigers. Massillon, Ohio here at Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium. Now, let's take a look back the last time these two met in the title game in 2020. Division II state championship game, Massillon and Hoven. Carrion Davis was dominant. A couple of TD receptions. He had a pick and a fumble recovery in that 35 to 6 Holman victory, which was their fifth state title. It was a big night on that evening back in 2020. I think we can repeat it and then some maybe this evening. All right, let's send it down to third member of our telecast team, Ashley Conlins. Ashley, familiarity, these two teams know each other implicitly well. How did that prepare both of them this week? You know, they certainly do, guys. I wanted to ask you what the over-under is going to be and how many times we're going to mention the rematch of these two teams and how familiar they are with one another. Now, Coach Terrell said he loves playing Maslin because it actually relaxes him as a coach. It's just old school football and he knows exactly what he's going to get when it comes to Maslin. On the other side, Coach Moore said it's more of a fan hype kind of thing when you're talking rematch between these two teams. He said whoever they are, they're ready to go out and play and he wanted to turn Tom Benson into Paul Brown Stadium guys and I think they achieved just that. Absolutely, Ashley. We will uh, hear from Ashley Collins throughout the course of the evening. Tonight's first half kickoff is brought to you by Kehonian Homes. All right. All the anticipation, all of uh, the talking, it's all done now as it's time to put the football in the air and uh, decide it between these two very illustrious Ohio programs. Well, Ashley said Coach Tyrell wanted Maslin Tiger Nation to turn this into Paul Brown Stadium. And I'll tell you what, Reg, when I walked into this facility about a half hour before the gates were open, there were about 1,500 people standing in line. You look at them there. These Maslin Tigers have shown up here to help support their Tigers. Now that kick's going to come up short about the 22-yard uh, line. And Holman had to pick that football up live, of course. Charlie Mellon, a senior wide receiver, did that, which is going to uh, bring out the Holman offense. And this offense is, of course, uh, one that has put up big, big numbers. 
Tonight's starting lineups are going to be brought to you by Akron Children's. Tylen Boykin, you see his numbers on the year. Outstanding touchdown to interception ratio for this uh, very dual threat quarterback. Yeah, it goes by Juice. Started 16 games last year at corner, and now he's the quarterback for the Knights. Run some misdirection, but Maslin is all over that as they took down Xavier Williams. How about that Maslin hit from Dorian? Pr was that Pringle? The running back linebacker, Dorian Pringle. He was uh, questionable throughout the course of the week, but he made that first stop. It's for a loss of three. Going to tee that up and unload deep, and we're going to get a flag, and that might be a P.I. that's going to be called on uh, Zachary Liebler. Liebler out of the, uh, the secondary. As there was contact. Pass interference. Defense number 15. 15-yard penalty. First down. And intended receiver, uh, Ryan, was a Tyson Campbell, as we heard for the first time tonight from our white hat, the game referee, Charles Anderson. So Tyson Campbell's typically the free safety. He's a Central Michigan commit. But in a game like this, all hands on deck, you put your best athletes and best players on the field, and right away they take a shot deep to Campbell. That'll move the sticks for the Holman Knights. Oh, this offense so prolific. Going to go back to the ground game here. I got four in that first down carry. Caleb Jones, that 185 pound senior. All right, let's take a look at the backs and receivers. Caleb Jones just got that call, and this wide receiver core is exceptional. Peyton Cook, only a sophomore, has an offer from just about anybody who can give an offer to a kid wanting to come to college. I mean, you name it, that college program wants number zero, Peyton Cook on their team, but they're going to have to wait a couple of years. He's only a sophomore. Uh, Caleb Jones uh, on that first down call. We've got three. Three wide receivers. Caleb Jones again through an opening. Jones over the 45 to the 47 yard line. Again, I mentioned 185 pounds. Seeing you see hits that hole. He's got a burst. Yeah, take a look at the right side of the line pulling and leading up for Jones. You see 73 towns in 50 will Satter white. He's a Tennessee commit. I told you there's a lot of D1 guys on the field here. But they're given a heavy dose of Caleb Jones early. It's a good look at Nate Towns in the center. 6'5", 290. This is a good offensive line for Hoban. We're going to see some excellent play in the trenches for both teams on both sides of the ball. Stay with the ground game. More Caleb Jones. So that's three straight carries for this 185 pound senior. And he's uh, igniting the flame early here for Holman. Let's take a look at the masculine defense, Ryan. Keep an eye on Mike Bright. The full back, I mean, the full, he plays fullback with the nose tackle. Vito McConnell, excellent linebacker. And the back half, they're, they're not the big, they can cover. These guys can cover. This is an excellent masculine defense. Been a heavy dose of Caleb Jones here. And Hope is going to get hit with a uh, procedure call here. Dead ball. False start. Off to number 50. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Right, Kavanaugh, how about our keys to the game? And they're brought to you by the Northern Ohio Honda dealers. We just talked a little bit about the trench play. And that's what they got to do. The Hoban Knights have to establish the run. They're already doing that defensively. Contain Dewan Owens and for Maslin. Can they keep Dewan Owens' jersey clean? Let him do his thing. And defensively, they need to win at the line of scrimmage. Four receivers here. Stay with Caleb Jones. Gaping hole. Jones nearing the numbers as he again carves up that Maslin D in the ground game. Second and long. That's five consecutive times. One was taken away by that false start, but they've gotten Caleb Jones the football. Jones is going to go get a respite here. Take a look right out here. You're going to see 14 stock blocking on the outside. That's hard to look at that block. That's how you really get the run game going at that second level. You got to have your wide receivers out getting after people, getting into them. 
And finally, a well-deserved break for Caleb Jones. Yeah, no question. Mind run out. Maslin, this defense, been tremendous. They've allowed only 32 points in five playoff games. Well, the Hoban Knights going to stay with a ground game, though, as uh, they get the, uh, the first carry of uh, this one for Juice Boykin. There's Tyler Hackenbranch coming up from the safety position to make a hit. Boykin, 165 pounder, and again uh, the plethora of running backs in this in this Holman system. Good ones. They got a lot. We're going to see a freshman. Hard to play at Maslin or Hoban as a freshman, but we'll see. Braden Feaster in a little bit, I imagine. On second and five, Jones got another first down. Got to the numbers on that left side of the football field and then cut it back inside as Malachi Card made the hit for Maslin. This is big boy football they're playing. Watch the left side. They put a couple slots there. They're bringing 73, the center towns in. Look at that block. And they are imposing their will up front. Michael, you know, this is the type of game. Coach Tim Turrell says whoever doesn't turn the ball over should win this. But when you have evenly matched teams, if you can establish the run, it's going to go a far way to not only demoralize the other team, but also move the football down the field. The run game, and now we go fire that quick in, and that's hauled in. Throwing that strike, outstanding throw that's uh, hauled in by Braden Grant. Grant made the grab. The Peyton Cook in coverage. There's Cook, who wears the number zero on the hit. This Maslin defense reeling a little bit here. This defense that gives up only an average of about seven points per game. <laughs> Man. Mentioned the freshman. Here he is, Braden Feaster. Feaster gets the call. Back to the ground game. You see the size of uh, Feaster, as Ryan mentioned. It's a ninth grader, but 6'1", close to 220 pounds as that uh, Maslin hit out of the secondary came from Ryan Page. I hope when I grow up, I'm 6'1", 215 pounds. Okay. Yeah, you know well, well, yeah. I don't think I spent enough time in the weight room to look like you that. got something to shoot for then, buddy. <laughs> there you go. Third down and one. This tight formation. That football's on the ground. Maslin says it's theirs. Flags fly. Football came out. Maslin's on it. Big time turnover as Holman was running the football with strength until they coughed it up. It's just a center quarterback exchange. The ball never hits Juice Boykin's hands. Slips underneath, and how about that man, Dorian Pringle? Look at the ball awareness to get on it. He goes underneath the legs of Townsend to bring it in, and Maslin has just flipped the script on Hoban. We just talked about the turnovers, Reg. First one, Hoban turns it over. Well, Maslin gets the football for the first time, uh, stunting that drive. That's that straight quarterback keep. That's for 12 and a first down as DeWan Owens. This young man, you're going to love him. He's proficient in every aspect of quarterback he play. Threw for over 1,500 yards this year, Ryan. Ran for another 1,200 plus. Man, he's special. Uh, their first game was against Baldasta, and he came in about the second quarter, and I don't think he left the quarterback position since then. He is a dynamic, dynamic quarterback. Jameer Gamble is offset to the right, the running back. That is Gamble, and he absolutely got rocked by Devin Bell. Bell, who came up from that outside backer spot, laid a wallop on Jameer Gamble. 240 pounds of a wallop from Bell. Look at De uh, Bell blitzing the run game, and if he didn't get him, his <laughs> Eli Lee was right behind him. You see them coming up now what you have to be concerned about if you're hoping if you're going to crash in like that Dewan Owens will pull it and he's got the edge. Going to go with four wide receivers now the left hander Owens will fire that throw. It was hauled in by Braylon Tolls Tolls 145 pound junior and that Hoba defense uh, on uh, that hit out of that secondary for Hoban. 
the came from a Braden Grant. Left tackle Nolan Davenport because of injury moved from tight end. He's found a home there. Tolls, Wiggins, really good receivers on the outside. All right, big play for Maslin here. Third down and seven. They'll go four wide receivers again. Straight quarterback run. First down and a lot more in open space for Massel and his quarterback again. Tate Crable, who did an outstanding job. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. Let me check that. Do Dorian Owens, Dewan Owens. This is not how you draw up the play, and it doesn't really matter. But Dewan Owens is just allowing his eyes to dictate where he runs. He finds the hole. Rock Hill, who we featured, he's got enough speed to catch Dewan Owens. But that is the difference when you have a guy like this in your backfield at any moment he's a threat to break it and here he goes again Owens over 200 pounds is showing his versatility carrying the football Owens on another quarterback keep and Dewan Owens is uh, got it going on on this first possession of the uh, the evening for the Massillon Tigers nice job blocking but look at the missed tackles here by Hoven. Two guys get their hand on him, and ultimately it's Campbell who brings him down. I'm sorry, Rock Hill with another tackle. Uh, Owens running this offense. Keep the football on the ground and trying to cut back this time on um, that, uh, that carry. It was Mylon Lennox. Lennox, a junior. 195 pounder. All right, let's take a look at uh, the home defense brought to you by Akron Children's. Eli Lee and Ricky Williams look like they're college linebackers. Look at the size of those guys. And this is a star studded secondary for Hoven. Rock Hill, Tyson Campbell. There's Campbell. Nice hit tackle on the last play. A quarterback Dewan Owens leading this Maslin drive off that's again play fake well, Owens will keep the football Well, he he sells that RPO game really well Ryan you see he's a load to bring down man at 215 pounds And he's always falling forward moving forward. He doesn't go down on first contact looks like a running back and there's head coach Nate Moore who had such kind Words of praise for his quarterback Owens this week. Not hard to imagine why, right? I mean, this guy is a one man wrecking crew for the Tiger offense. They won that opener over Valdosta, that great program from Georgia by 11. This is Owens in trouble here. Down he goes, coming up for the corner, making that outstanding stop once again for the Hoban Knights was Brayton Grant. Second time we've called Grant. Excellent ability to get to the football off of his corner position. Well, this is what you have to do. It's it's waves of backs, and you have to keep outside contain on Owens. And that time Grant came up. Now let's see what uh, what Nate Moore has in mind here. This is a fourth down and eight. Offense staying on the football field with Dewan Owens. Three wide receivers. Owens going to take a shot for the end zone. It was on the hands of his talented receiver, Braylon Tolls, but Tolls couldn't bring it in. How about the throw by Owens? This is great coverage by Campbell. Owens gives his receiver a chance, and Tolls just can't bring it in. Both teams have moved the football in their first Owens. possession. Media. Hoven turned it over. Maslin couldn't convert on fourth down. Scoreless late first quarter. D2 championship game on Spectrum News 1. Every morning, the people of Ohio have the opportunity to wake up and start fresh. We want to be a different kind of news channel putting storytelling and community first. Well, it's really humbling to be invited to our neighbors' homes and help them plan their day. Thank you so much for joining us this morning on Spectrum News 1. I'm Sophia Constantine. Your morning.
on Spectrum News One, weekdays five to noon, exclusively on Spectrum. When you buy Spectrum Mobile for just twenty nine ninety nine a month, you get a second line for free. So get one line for yourself and a free line for your devoted friend. 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 Or you can get one line for yourself and one line for your kid. Sold. Or both lines for yourself. I use one for business and another for business. I do a lot of business. Get one line of unlimited for twenty nine ninety nine and get a second line free for twelve months. Call Flick or visit a Spectrum store today. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! you now and AARP is here to help find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving it doesn't feel like a job to me journalism is my passion I started out as an actress and singer which is not the typical way to get into broadcasting whether it's journalism singing acting writing it's all about storytelling I guess I fell in love with news because it's the real story of us. It's the real story of community. I'm Mary Lee Melendez, anchor of Spectrum News One. Back at Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium. What a beautiful night this is, huh? Football phenomenal, just like it was meant to be. It's brought to you by Green and Sons. Farm and lawn equipment, 45 degrees, wind, not really a factor. And uh, this crowd has been treated to two of the top teams, not only in the state of Ohio, but nationally. In their high school football programs, each with a strong drive in their first possessions here in the opening quarter. Second opportunity here for the, uh, the Hoban Knights. They're going to stay with the ground game as uh, that quarterback, Juice Boykin, continues to lead this as that's Xavier Williams on that first down carry give them uh, let's give them five and call it second and five we're almost at the end of the first quarter Michael and I'm extremely impressed with the offensive line for Hoban moving bodies creating lanes and these running backs are hitting the holes anytime you can pick up five on first down that's a win they got that five we'll call it at second and five again now that throw should have been hauled in, but it was off the hands. As that was uh, receiver uh, Tate Crable, the tight end. Crable wasn't able to haul it in. And of course, the uh, the Crable name, a very familiar one, and a legendary one around uh, both of these programs. There you go. Third and five as you get a good look at quarterback Tylen Boykin called Juice. Just a junior. So talented. Quarterback draw. That black shirted Massillon Tiger defense uh, would have none of it as Hobart's going to have to put the football away. And nose tackle Mike Wright at uh, maybe 280 pounds before breakfast got <laughs> off a couple of blocks and made that big hit there's the big fella we'll see him on offense he's already been out there he's a goal line back a little bit of an iron head hayward type running back i like it yeah 12 minutes of football in the books as we look to decide a division two state championship here in the state of ohio that begins a just a magnificent weekend as the football season gets seven championships in 2023. I'm here today in Columbus where the community is gathering for their events. At Spectrum News, we're committed to our communities around the clock, delivering stories that inspire and news that matters in your community. Our journalists are dedicated to bringing you trusted, balanced local news every day. And now, Spectrum Internet only customers, you can watch Spectrum News One on your TV, connecting you to your community 24-7. Spectrum News, now streaming.
exclusively for Spectrum customers. Spectrum Mobile is giving you one free mobile line when you buy one unlimited line for $29.99. So I can get two lines for the price of one? That's right, for just $29.99. It's the best deal in mobile. But is the service reliable? Absolutely. Spectrum Mobile is super reliable, coast to coast. Get one line for $29.99 and the second line is free. All with no taxes or hidden fees. Switch to Spectrum Mobile Unlimited for $29.99 a month and get a second unlimited line free for 12 months. Call 1-844-882-2999. Today I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. Really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. Sunday mornings, take an in-depth look at your community. In Focus with Mike Kallmeyer, a half-hour show dedicated to the important issues, driven to bring decision makers together and committed to elevating discussion and debate. Your community, your state, your show in focus with mike kallmeyer sunday mornings at 10 30 on spectrum news one also available on the spectrum news app a lot of big play offensive excitement however nobody put points on the board in that first quarter as we are score let's take a look at our road to canton brought to you by your central ohio toyota dealers and this of course uh, for the hoban knights and this is a football team that, uh, you know, Ryan, I mean, what, what, they've dominated in the playoffs. As, uh, what, they haven't given up just uh, tough one last week, right? And coming to, had to come back in the second half to beat uh, Mike Elder's Avon Eagle. Well, you saw him beat Walsh Jesuit in the regional final. Head coach Nick Alexander was, who's got a terrific program at Walsh, but he was very complimentary of the speed of the Hoban defense. Been a good turnover there as uh, possession changes. As uh, Hobart will down the football inside the 20 yard line. Okay, let's uh, take a look at our road to Canton. Central Ohio Toyota dealers as we take a look at the Massillon Tigers. And uh, would you say that's five dominant playoff victories, partner? <laughs> Offensively, defensively, Coach Moore, he's got some dudes, man. Look, if you can't get more than a touchdown against a team and with five different teams and five chances in the playoffs that just means your defense is playing lights out a play action that toe was almost picked off oh did you see what uh, elbert hill the fourth had in front of him one of the top corners in the state of ohio he thought he was seeing six in his hands ryan talk about the anticipation how about the break on the ball, Reg? There is nothing but green space between Rock Hill and the goal line if he catches that pass. Mm. Elbert Hill, yep, known as Rock. Now the Hoba defense continues to swarm. As uh, for a loss there is coming up uh, to make that hit. That's Devin Bell as De Bell was able to uh, put it on. That the Massillon Tiger uh, quarterback, Dewan Owens. Lost there as well, third and 14. So the Hoban D has got Dewan Owens in this Massillon offense well behind the sticks. Here as we open up quarter number two. Four wide receivers for Dewan Owens, the left-handed slinger. He'll fire the in route. It'll get hauled in, but well short of a first down. Oh, it's hooked up there with uh, Jock Carter. Carter, the uh, the junior, made the grab. Jock Quez Carter. And if you're if you're holding, you're going to let that go all day. Five yard completion on fourth and behind two sticks. And what a job by the Hoban defense to get the football back in their hands. <laughs> Hoban should get very good operating position as uh, 
the field changes. I'm making that grab at the 40-yard line, but uh, taken down right away. Uh, that uh, that Hoban Knights punt return uh, came from Parker Falkenstein. And Falkenstein got to take it down as on that special team hit from uh, the Washington Tigers was Lucas Scherzer. I want to remind you uh, tonight is only the beginning for the OHSAA football state championships on Spectrum News 1, the Spectrum News app. Tomorrow morning at 1030 a.m. Division 6 final featuring uh, Versailles and Kirkland. Coverage begins 1015 tomorrow morning with the OHSAA championship game day as the D6 championship is played. A masseling all over that first down carry from Xavier Williams. Coming up from his linebacking spot was Cody Fair. Fair, great size, 6'2", 225 pounds. And with the size, Ryan Cavanaugh gets off blocks, gets to the football. He's got it, but it's Dorian Pringle, number three, who presses the hole and makes the running back, Xavier Williams, bounce right into the waiting hands of Cody Fair. Dorian Pringle, uh, you mentioned earlier, he was doubtful. We weren't sure if we were going to see number three for Maslin. But he's out there, and he's not just playing. He's playing very well. How many carries have we had? I'm at six, maybe seven, that have gone for negative yardage tonight by both teams. And we're early. Owens is going to load it up deep. Was there contact? Not enough to throw a flag as uh, Owens was, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Juice Boykin was looking to uh, hook up with uh, Tyson Campbell. There's Campbell who wears that number one. Well, we have one of the top referees in the state, Mike Dame, up in the booth with us. And he's shaking his head, saying the legs got tangled. Incidental contact, no pushing, no hands, no flag. The crowd's getting loud. Maslin Radio today said they sold over 14,000 tickets to this game. Third down 11 for Juice Boykin. He'll deliver that out. It's hauled in. Going to be short of that line to make, however, as a Boykin was able to hook up with Bradley. Was that uh, it was Crable? It was Crable that made that grab. All right. Look at that. Right on cue. Nice camera work, guys. That is only one side of the stadium it's the Maslin side and I don't know Reg you think that's at least 14,000 people I'd say so easy I feel like Red does an NFL Hall of Fame game dropped the snap Holman's gonna put the football away and it was blocked Maslin came up with that block and that was Chase Bond the 6'4 255 pounder all it takes is that one hiccup you drop a snap it's going to get stuck back in your face. Chase Bond made sure it was. Big top play, special teams for the Massillon Tigers. It looked like a good snap. Ryan Burns just dropped it, was able to regain control. Yeah, it just looks like he drops it. And Chase Bond, wow, big time play. You know, we had a turnover earlier for Hoban. This doesn't go as a turnover, but it should. You know, for all intents and purposes, Michael, that's two turnovers to zero. And right now, Maslin is in business. Chase Bond has put his Tigers offense. That's straight quarterback keep again for Dewan Owens. That white shirt's all over it, though. Got Owens as he got back to that line of scrimmage. So they start this possession on a short field at the 28-yard line. And this is where, throughout the course of the season, you give Maslin a short field to play with, you're going to be looking at him in the end zone soon. We'll see, though if that transpires here. Both these defenses have been bend but don't break. And Hoban's defense has been able to bail them out on a couple of occasions early in this game, and they're asking him to do it again. Four wide receivers, three by one. Jacquez Carter, did he make that catch? Now the officials are saying, no, he one-hopped it. Jacquez Carter, the 5'10", 165-pound wideout, Got to think, though, uh, Ryan Kavanaugh. DeWan Owens had that throw back. He'd like it back because uh, he one-hopped Carter. He sure did, yeah. And uh, they had the blocking on the edge. 
And it's getting a little chippy out there. He's like, take your hands off me. Nah, that's just a state championship game, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's what you expect. Heavy competition here. Owens, not a lot of room. I tell you what, uh, this this defensive front seven of the uh, the Hoban Knights are doing a terrific job here in this second possession against uh, quarterback Dewan Owens and boy his his quarterback keep run game. Yeah, that's Cartier Williams coming in at linebacker to shut him down. And once again, Michael, it's kind of no man's land. So Tigers are going to go on fourth. Fourth down at ten. Nate Moore. <laughs> this is uh, this is what we do, fellas. <laughs> we look to move the sticks on fourth down. They're going to get their second shot right here. It's fourth at ten, and Nate Moore now says, "Let's talk about it." All right, time we'll out. take this time out. Still scoreless. Washington, Hoban, and Maslin play for a Division II state championship. This will be a media timeout. Right back to Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium on Spectrum News One. I really enjoyed the entire process of storytelling. Every day is another day in history and I get a front row seat and it's a big honor and something I care about. From the things that we do in the studio to what we do in the field, everybody has a story to tell here in Ohio and it's my goal to be able to tell as many of those stories and meet as many of those people and share in their experiences and learn from them. Thanks for being with us here on Spectrum News One. I'm Chuck Ringwald. From coast to coast, you've seen us around. We live and work in the communities we serve. Our commitment runs deep. We're invested here, creating good jobs and supporting small businesses, many of which we're proud to call customers. You count on us to keep you connected to what matters most. And we're committed to delivering you the best internet, TV, and mobile service. We're Spectrum, connecting the places we all call home. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. There can be a lot of noise out there when it comes to politics. On Capitol this week, we're going beyond that. We try to make sure that we don't just tell people what's happening, but we analyze the legislation and we're able to give them a good sense for what it will ultimately mean for them and for their community. Right here on Capitol This Week, Wednesdays at 7 and 11 p.m., available on all of your favorite devices, exclusively on Spectrum. As we get back, this was uh, well, earlier today at uh, Maslin High School as the uh, students got that black and orange prominently displayed, do they not? I mean, those aren't just, you know, poster board and writing. This is some pretty elaborate decorations at Maslin Washington High School. Big fourth down. Hot fourth down. Pressure coming. Flags are also coming. It certainly appears that Dewan Owens might have been yanked down by a face mask from uh, Jordan Pritchard Sewell of Hoban. Let's wait. Now, Michael, this is not an automatic first down, so it'll be fourth down if it's not enough to get the first down yardage. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 20, 15-yard penalty results in a first down. They go 15 yards, so it is going to be a first down. Fourth and 10. Great Correct. pass rush. Be happy to miss Great pass rush by Sewell. He reaches out, and just unfortunately for the Hoban Knights, wow, what a fall by Dewan Owens. Well, he's going to move the sticks, huh? All the way down to the 15-yard uh, line now. So Maslin will keep this drive alive. They were looking at fourth and long. But got the penalty to keep the drive alive. Back to the ground game for 
the Massillon Tigers is Mylon Lewis. Lewis got a couple. 195 pounds. Let's take another look at this face mask. My goodness. You know, this face mask calls, and then there's that. Second and seven. The line to make is at the five. Back to the ground game. Going to go to that big back, because that's Mike Wright. When I say big back, we're talking about mm, before breakfast and lunch, maybe 280. If they wait them after that, <laughs> questionable. <laughs> that's right. Man, talk about a goal line back. I'm going to go, look at this. Eight rushing TDs on offense, ten and a half sacks on defense. If I was playing high school fantasy football, I'd draft Mike Wright. All right, third down and short. Eight up near the line of scrimmage. It doesn't matter. Touchdown, Mylon Lewis. Lennox into the end zone for the touchdown. Lennox came through a gaping hole that was provided by Nate Moore's offensive line, the center Brady Jones, and the left guard and right guard, Sam Snodgrass, Mike Looney, the tackles, Jason Lewis, Nolan Davenport, they got that blocked extremely well. So Mylon Lennox into the end zone. Now the first points on the board. It took 18 minutes to get on the board, but that's exactly what Maslin has done. A lot of whistles as the uh, the Tigers were looking to add the PAT with Vincent Keller. As you look at the touchdown maker, dead ball, dead ball. false start, false start. offense number 92, five-yard penalty, replay drop. Mylon Lennox got in the end zone, but uh, the field goal and a point after man, Vincent Keller, is going to have to hit it again. Guilty party there was Chase Bond. Chase Bond, two-way performer. Well, Vincent Keller is going to have to hit it again, this time from 25 yards out. Out of the hole of DeWan Owens. A lot of leg, and Keller will connect. The Massillon Tigers put the first seven on the board here tonight at quarter number two at Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium in Kent. Go back to the touchdown, Ryan. It starts with Brady Jones, the center. And look at this blocking, and then you just go right through the hole. You guys can roll it, but watch this block. Jones with the seal down. And look at that job. Look at the hole, and then... Lennox just allows his eyes to guide him. How about the big fella, Mike Wright, 45? You know, usually we just show, featured him. He's got eight touchdowns. This time he plays the fullback role and gets a key kickout block. Lennox right off of him into the end zone. Ashley Collins, a strong offensive drive by Nate Moore's offensive line. Yeah, certainly, guys. And when we talked to Coach Moore earlier this week, just talking about that O-line achieving offensive excellence, one of the best lines they've had he said are certainly up there they dealt with their share of injuries he said haven't had their best lineman all year but they had to shuffle the deck quite a bit because of those injuries but they've settled in the last five weeks or so and it's been the same it's been consistent and that has been key with their attack all right Ashley appreciate that yeah, as you get a good look at uh, Nate Moore tremendous job he's done what a football is bobbled out of bounds. Very dangerous trying to pick that up from a kick returner, Lanier Folk. And off his hands and out of bounds. So it will be the Hoban Knights football here. Now for the first time this evening, uh, playing in arrears, trailing 7 nothing. Coming up at halftime, Brett Hildebrand and Matt DeRazio break down. The first half, plus all the latest news of weather with Spectrum News ones, Curtis Jackson and Eric Elwell. Ashley Collins will have a chat with Bo Rudd, Director of Sport Management and Officiating for the OHSAA. Don't go away anywhere. All that coming up at halftime. 5.59 left until halftime begins. Staying with the run game, the Holman Knights 
That's quarterback uh, Juice Boykin and Braylon Feaster. Feaster on the carry. Now that Maslin defense that we talked about it only allows seven a game, 33 yards on the ground a game. Seven hits, tackles behind the line of scrimmage, and that's how good they've been all year long defensively. Hoban moved the first football, their first possession tonight, before they finally turned it over. Stay with the ground game. Not much there. Brighton Feaster again on the carry, and uh, Massillon linebacking core that features Cody Fair was in on that stop. Get the sense you're going to call hear Cody Fair's name a lot tonight. This 225 pound linebacking tackling machine for Massillon. Cody Fair is having a great evening thus far. That's a that's a happy group of people right there in those Massillon stands, the home stands here at Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium. Third and seven. And again, a mess of defense all over that as another third down call. They come up and uh, put the hit on Parker Falkenstein as Falkenstein got knocked down by Adonis Vaughn. Vaughn, another one of those uh, very talented DBs. Three and out. It's going to force again Hoban to punt the football away. Back in that deep spot, Tyler Hackenbrack for Maslin. Hackenbrack get, gets driven back to the 23-yard line, and this punt cover squad of Hoban, big there, Xavier Williams was all over Hackenbrack to take him down as he handled that punt. Yeah, it was an awkward tackle. Officials timeout for injury. So Maslin uh, will have the football. As one of their punt return team members being attended to here. It's, it's Tyler Hackenbrack. Uh, again, it was an awkward landing. As you see Coach Moore heading out to check on his player. And this is significant not only because Hackenbrack is one of their primary punt and kick returners, but he's one of their starting defensive backs as well. You see Coach Moore, he was you know, talking a little bit this week about, you know, the Maslin against the world, and a lot of people want to say that, but, you know, they've, they've kind of made it their rallying cry. Of course, uh, I think if you, you followed High school football here in the Buckeye State. For any measure of time, you know a lot about this uh, absolutely phenomenal program. Maslin Washington High School in Stark County. And as you hear the cheers from the Maslin sideline uh, for Tyler Hackenbrack. Well, Hackenbrack is up and under his own power. He's a Wright State baseball commit, by the way. Tyler Hackenbrack so uh, outstanding on the diamond just as he is on the football field and hopefully he can uh, continue playing and get back at the game tonight. So Maslin with their 7 nothing lead and taking over again offensively. They're going to go back to the ground game and uh, shake and get to the uh, the edge but not much there is on that uh, that first out carry was Jameer Gamble Gamble wears number 21 right in your living room here what a shifty player made man miss just before that well, this masculine offense really started to put it together on that uh, albeit now that you know after the turnover they played on the short field but they capitalized it put seven on the board and have this lead. Stay with the ground game. Boy, that's an outstanding hit, though, from the linebacking spot for the Hoban Knights as 
That was Caleb Jones. Jones came up and, and made that stop as he was able to uh, hit Milan Lennox and stop him in his tracks. First time out here of this uh, second quarter from this uh, Hoban Knight squad defensively. Hoban takes the timeout. They're looking at this clock saying with three minutes to go, we want to get the ball back. All right, now you can take uh, Spectrum News 1 with you wherever you go. Do what millions of other users have done. Download the Spectrum News app on your favorite device. and includes Apple TV and Roku. You can get the latest news and weather and watch the live stream 24-7. Go to SpectrumNewsApp.com to learn more about the app. Download it right now if you haven't already. Great to have you with us tonight on Spectrum News 1 for this Division II state championship game that begins this Absolutely tremendous three-day state championship football weekend here. Out of a Tom Benson Hall of Fame stadium as you get a good look at DeWan Owens. Six foot one, 200 pounds senior quarterback for the Massillon Tigers who his last possession. He got his offense in the end zone with their seven nothing lead. Now Owens on that roll left. Owens throw had too much on it and uh, he was not able to hook up with Jacquez Carter. Carter the 160 pound senior is Owens is uh, showing a uh, not throwing the football when he's got open receivers and uh, hitting them well. That just came out wrong. Sometimes the guy's just too open. You know, he, instead of putting a little more juice on it and hitting him in the numbers, it sailed on him, floated out of bounds, and the Knights get the defensive stop they want. And again, they should get excellent field position. Now that line drive shot is going to angle out of bounds, kicked it away from Parker Folkenstein, the return man. Now let's see what the officiating crew are going to put that out of bounds. They'll say it sailed out of bounds right at the midfield strike. So that's where Hoban will begin. Summit County, the home of the uh, the Hoban Knights independent program. Look at the state champions. 15, 16, 17, 18. That three-peat, won it again in 20. Just an extraordinarily successful program with uh, that record in the state playoffs. But Ryan, they find themselves down 7 to nothing. They've got very good field position for the second time tonight. Well, they're going to see if their quarterback, Tylen Juice Boykin, can start making plays for them, move the football. This is Boykin. Pressure. Boykin kept it alive and then threw it incomplete. Threw it uh, in the ground as he looked for wide out Joey Hardman. Juice did a nice job of evading the pass rush of the Tigers and just kind of going the wrong way. I love what Tim Terrell told us this week, Michael, about Juice Boykin. You know, he, he's been a quarterback his whole life. Last week, 16-game starter at corner, starting this year at cornerback, not on the defensive end. And he said, I, I can coach him like a defensive back. He, he has that, what all good cover corners have, short memory. And he's like, I can say whatever I want. And he just brushes it right off onto the next play. All over the ground game, though, is uh, the black-shirted Tigers once again. That's Chase Bond. How many times have we already called Chase Bond in on the hit as he uh, took Brayton Feaster down? There's not a lot of room for Feaster here. Well, this is Mike Wright. You see the, the nose tackle number 45. They tried to cut him, and the 280-pounder pushed him down, jumped over top, and then got in on the tackle with Chase Bond. Chase Bond previously in this game, the block punt that set up the first and only score. And now third and 10. And now, as you see with uh, that play clock running down. Gotta love the gamesmanship. The t you know, the clock management. Hoban calls timeouts to get it back. And now, with the clock slipping away, they want the time to, to run out. So they run the play clock down, take a timeout. All right, while we have this timeout, I want to remind you the Ohio Department of Public Transportation reminds all of us it's okay to use your phone during a sporting event, but you should never use that mobile phone behind the wheel. 
If an officer does see a violation, they could pull you over. Fines now start at $150. Phones down, everybody. It's the law here in Ohio. Now you get a good look at uh, this this Hoban coaching staff playing from behind at uh, at seven to nothing tonight. And looking at a third down at ten. Wow, they tried to run snap. Down. Yeah, that 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 snap came up high. As uh, yo, know, they were uh, you know, looking to try to run a gadget play and get something that might catch the Maslin Tiger defense. Napping didn't happen though. Well, they got Dan Rogers. They're trying to run a counter. Boykin's going to fake it to the right, but look at the penetration. It's Mike Wright again that blows it up. It confuses the timing. The mesh points off, and then there's a swarm. Four or five Maslin Tigers that bring him down uh, again Deion Rogers trying to get the counter and how good has this young man been today Mike Wright see him on offense running the ball blocking as a fullback on their touchdown and just creating havoc on the defensive line as we talked to uh, you know both coaching staffs this week but you can tell Nate Moore was very uh, enthusiastic when we uh, mentioned <laughs> Mike Wright trying to downplay it a little bit exactly what he means to this football team but I think he uh, he certainly uh, let us know that uh, you know this young man on both sides of the football is a dynamic talent well he was a running back in the eighth grade so coach Moore knew he had the ability to play that position uh, and then you know freshman sophomore going to his junior year they were like hey let's try this out he had a touchdown and a scrimmage against Avon to start the season. And again, eight in all total through the first 15 games for Mike Wright getting into the end zone. So fourth down and eight. And uh, that is uh, going to force uh, Tim Terrell to get his punt team on the football field once again. Trying to boom that punt and hang it high. And... That was downed at the one yard line again outstanding job being done by the Hoban Knights Elbert uh, Juice Hill or rather uh, Elbert Hill the uh, the fourth down that punt and they're going to put that inside the one yard line. Coach Terrell was telling us this week rock you know this is what he does with his speed. Uh, it's just next level speed when you talk about Rock Hill and uh, in Power Five offers. He's got Alabama, Notre Dame, Georgia. They were playing Walsh the first time this year, and a defensive coordinator from Ohio State was on the sidelines. And Rock Hill gets the ball, interception, takes off, runs past him, and he said, "I just happen to be standing there." And the co defensive coordinator says, "That's that's." fast for our guys that's how fast Rock Hill is a lot of whistles and flags came out very fast Dead there ball. false start office number 28 half the distance to the goal first down Maslin was running that straight quarterback keep again um, uh, their outstanding uh, running QB Dewan Owens well the good news for Maslin it was only about a half of a yard that they lost, but the bad news is they're only about a half of a yard away from their own end zone. And Mylon Lennox got whistled for that. And now, Holman's going to take this time out with a minute and 45. Now that's number three, so they're done with the timeouts here in the first half. And let's see, you start playing this scoreboard math now as Holman obviously looks to get the football back. How tall is that guy? My goodness. You don't see somebody generally that's that tall. It's Nolan Davenport. That was the tight end that moved to tackle. Ashley talked about it earlier. Evan Sergo was one of their best linemen injured. So Nolan Davenport moved from tight end to tackle. 
I want to remind all of you, Spectrum News 1 and Spectrum News app have all seven championship games. Tomorrow it is Versailles and uh, Kirtland that kicks things off at uh, 10 30 in the morning, followed by Watterson and Toledo Central Catholic D3 final at three. Division one with uh, St. Edward tangling with Springfield at 7.30. And Saturday at 10.30 in the morning with Dalton and Marion local in D7. And Liberty Center against Perry in Division five at three. And finally, Kettering Alter and Glenville wrap things up 7.30 in Division four. All on Spectrum News one. Did Owens get out of the end zone? He did not. He did not. That's a hoping night safety as they took down Dewan Owens in the end zone. Great hit that came from Tanner Mintz coming up out of that outside linebacker spot. Can that maybe ignite Hoban coming up with the points defensively? Yeah, you know, what a what a time for a timeout for Tim Tyrell, knowing they have the ball at the half yard line. And take a look at the number four. This is what you want. You create a pile, you bounce Dewan Owens out, and Tanner Mintz playing in the goal line, grabs him, secures him. Cartier Williams is there as well to make sure Owens doesn't get out of the end zone. And Hoban is on the board, and they're getting the ball with a buck 40 left in this half. How proficient is this Hoban defense? That is six times they've forced safeties now. Uh, if they backed up their opponents uh, deep around their own goal line. So put that deuce, put that two on the board for the defense for the Hoban Knights. Six safeties in a season? Yeah. Now, what's this? We got to talk to Tim Street, someone with the OHSAA, and find out what is the record for most safeties in a season by a team. Six safeties? You don't hear it often, do you? In any level of football. Oh, my gosh. No. So also they put two points on the board and uh, let's see they could potentially get the football back after they forced the safety put the two on the board to get the football back in decent operating position still with a minute and 40 left in this first half they have used all of their timeouts have the Hoban Knights that's a short kick very short kick going to be uh, close to being almost a fair caught by uh, Hoban as uh, that's Ace Brown. Ace is uh, just a sophomore. Tight end, defensive end, and so the operating uh, position going to be pretty decent at the 48-yard line. Series history. Of course, this is game number six, as we've told you a couple of times. That's these two tremendous D2 programs. Hoban leads at 3-2. Fifth time in six years, these two squads meeting in the state playoffs. All right, buck 39 left. Holbin down by five at seven to two. Official sign off. And now our game referee tonight, White Hat Charles Anderson, says let's. Uh, he's going to get a timeout, just momentarily though. So, Tylen Boykin, nicknamed Juice, this junior quarterback, ready to operate the offense. Boykin, double pass. And this could have been a double pass as he was able to hook up with out of uh, the backfield as he connected with uh, Elbert Rock Hill, sophomore. They like getting the football in Hill's hands, don't they? Well, they wanted to put that plus speed on display, get it to Rock Hill in space. I was looking for the double pass because it was so far behind. This is an excellent job defensively to keep him in bounds. I mean, not keep him in bounds, keep him from running past you by Zach Liebler. Got 11 yards on that hook up to Rock Hill. Now back to the ground game on that quarterback keep. Outside the numbers, trying to turn that corner though. And wasn't able to do it as uh, quarterback uh, Juice Boykin got chased down by the speed of that masculine defense on the edge. Look at this. What a talent Coach Tyrell is. Fixing uniforms, getting pads back inside while Colin plays. That's, that's veteran, a big time. Veteran move. Oh, man. That's focus. It's multitasking. 
Well, Boykin was able to get out of bounds and stop that clock. Minute 25 left first half. Boykin pulled that football down. Oh, no, he threw it and got picked off. That's intercepted by Vito McConnell. Oh, Boykin started to have problems hanging on the football, made an ill-advised throw. Vito McConnell said, we'll take that with our masculine defense. And this is where you got to throw it to someone you know in the stands. Tried to make something happen. You can see he's falling away, trying to get it to Parker Falkenstein, and Vito McConnell steps in front with the easy interception. Big time play by the Tiger defense. Second turnover of the half forced by the Tigers. So let's see what Nate Moore decides to do. Pretty good operating position. They'll start this from their own 43 yard line. They've got a 7 to 2 lead, and now it'll be Nate Moore and the Massillon Tigers who take this timeout. Washington. That is their third and final timeout of the half. Both teams uh, now have used them all. They got none left. This will be interesting to see how aggressive Maslin wants to get. I would assume fairly aggressive. I mean, you do have a five-point lead to take into the locker room, but with a minute 18 left, I mean, we haven't seen them really think about kicking a field goal in this first half. But when you've got someone like Dewan Owens on your team, you could score from anywhere on the field. How about that winning percentage? That'll work, right? You go 48 and 7 and 55 football games and win 87%. That's incredible. Got to go back a long way to find that kind of win percentage. Got the lead by five here, late second quarter to the Massillon Tigers. All wins will fire middle and he airmailed that as he was trying to hit that route in the middle of the football field to Braylon Tolls and had too much on it, sailed it over his head. The yeah, Owens has been high on a couple passes now. That's about getting your body down. You know, upright and you don't follow through. Generally, that's where the football is going to go. It's going to sail on you and go over your receiver's head. Four receivers. Owens again will come back with that, that same route just on uh, the other side of the football field. Gonna throw that quick slant there and intended for Jacquez Carter. And he's now missed two receivers on his throws here after getting the football in this very good operating position. Well, this Hoban Knight defense is heating up Owens, getting pressure, forcing Owens to throw it before he wants to. I think maybe Nolan Davenport, the 6'6 left tackle, was the only guy in the roster who could have caught that one. It was high. Now Owens on that straight quarterback keep. Maybe give him three. And let's see if Nate Moore, yeah, Nate Moore's wasting no time. He's got his punt team ready to come out on the football field. But again, no timeouts left. So they can run this down, Ryan, to inside 30 seconds before they've got to snap the football. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen. Um, you take a couple shots downfield, uh, you know, even though these were intermediate slants, that sort of thing. But if one of those passes on first or second down was able to convert, you would have saw them continuing to go. This time, third down, play it safe, run the ball, put your punt team out there, kick it off, go in the locker room with a lead. Be interesting to see if they give, I don't know if that's Rock Hill or Tyson Campbell back there, but both of these guys are threats. It's Campbell. Campbell watches that football uh, slide out of bounds. And it uh, looked like it was off the, uh, the side of the foot, but the result is solid as with just 18 seconds left and no timeouts, the Hoban Knights will have to start from their own 12-yard line. Ryan can't imagine them looking to take a shot here. As we said, the without an opportunity to stop the clock here. I, I think I wouldn't be surprised if they come out in victory formation, take a knee and yeah. go in the locker room. You know, especially with the struggles they've had to maintain the football. You saw an interception on the last one, a fumble earlier. And there it is, victory formation. Now, Maslin will get the football. 
to start quarter number three. So there's your knee from Colvin quarterback Tylen Boykin as uh, Juice took that knee. And the, uh, the majority of the noise is coming from the, uh, the black and orange of the Massillon Tigers as they've got this five point lead. The baseball score is seven to two <laughs> after 24 minutes of football. I did not have that as a halftime score guess. I'll tell you what, the defenses have taken center stage in our first state championship. Maslin's touchdown came on a short field, and Coben's only score was on the safety caused by the defense. All right, let's head down to uh, Ashley Collins as she stands by with a Maslin head coach, Nate Moore. Ashley? Thanks, Michael. Coach, obviously a premier game right now, and this is kind of what everyone was thinking it would be. When you look at your defense, especially, and the turnover, just how impressed, as they've been all season. Yeah, really impressed with our defense. Uh, it's two great teams going to battle today, and uh, we've both got stuff to talk about at, at halftime, and, and I'm sure we're going to have another great second half. Points at a premium, obviously. You take the lead into half, though. Your offensive line also so impressive. Yeah, you know, our, our guys grind, and, uh, you know, we're, we're big and tough and physical, and they're big and tough and physical, and, you know, we're just going to battle out there. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. All right, Ashley Collins, appreciate that with uh, with Nate Moore. As, eh, 24 minutes in the books. Still got 24 more to go, at least. Five-point deficit for Holman as the Maslin Tigers were the only touchdown in the first half. All right, we'll get the halftime roll for you out of Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium when we get back on Spectrum News 1. Our community is incredibly dynamic and diverse in many ways, and so is our weather. That's why at Spectrum News 1, we make sure you have the accurate information to help you plan your day every day. We will be tracking some changes. We know Ohio weather can change quickly. And when it does, we're here tracking it all so you know what to expect next. We have beautiful weather across Ohio. Watch the Spectrum News 1 weather experts on your TV and on the go with the Spectrum News app, exclusively on Spectrum. Prince, who needs your help? Click on this link. Avoid lawsuits. Click here to enter your social security Earn number. Nine hundred dollars a week. Apply here. You are under investigation by tax professionals. Your accounts have been frozen. Your account Type in your. <laughs> Spectrum One automatically blocks threats to your devices before they ever get to you. Who wants pizza? I love pizza. That's state-of-the-art security. That's Spectrum One. Medicaid and CHIP offer free or low-cost health coverage for kids and teens. These programs cover doctor's appointments, hospital visits, prescriptions, shots, and more. As parents, we get peace of mind knowing that our children are covered if they are sick or get injured. You may now be eligible for Medicaid, too, even if you've applied in the past. Enrollment is always open. Visit insurekidsnow.gov or call 1-877-KIDS-NOW. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Spectrum News One. News from a new perspective. We're dedicated to refreshing storytelling and empowering communities across the Buckeye State. With your local forecast every 10 minutes and all of the essential news you need 24 7. Plus, in depth shows and exclusives focused on your community. Always Ohio, always refreshing, always on. We are Spectrum News One. In the shadow of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, we have a scoreline Newt Rockney would be proud of. And some scoregami going on as well. Massel in Washington leading the Hoban Knights 7-2 at the break in the Division II State Championship game. Your OHSAA game day crew, Brett Hilper and Matt DeRazio here. 
in what has been a defensive battle and then some. Two premier defenses, not just in Division II, but across the entire landscape of Ohio high school football on display tonight. And they are playing equally well. 82 yards of total offense from both offenses in this game. The defense has been light, lights out. Yeah, we knew that coming into the game, really, that it was going to be a defensive battle. And honestly, because of the weather, the way it is, and the night that it is, it seems like a defensive battle. And, and exactly what you said, 82 yards, seven points, two points. I mean, not much happening on the offensive side of the ball. And this is the difference, right? If the offenses are essentially having similar output, what you know transpires to separate the two teams, it's the mistakes, the two turnovers from Hoban and a block punt in their own half. That's really, I think, what's separating and why Maslin has a touchdown on the board. The other, the other thing you want to add into that, too, is the face mask that happens. You see here the, the, the drops, the snap by the punter. The turnovers are key, and, and the points came off of that. But then it was also the miscues of, of, the, of the face mask that kept the drive alive and gave seven points to Maslin. Now, if you, if you eliminate those, and that's probably what Hoban's talking about at halftime right now, is, hey, if we can just play a solid football game, uh, we, we're going to have a chance to win it. Chase Bond blocking the punt for Maslin that you just saw. And then there was that face mask penalty that kept the drive alive and eventually had the Tigers in the end zone a few plays from there. But that's really, and you heard really the difference. And you heard Nate Moore say both teams are battling, both teams are fighting and going at it. It's a physical affair right now at Tom Benson Hall Fame Stadium. And the one thing you think about is Hoban's been in a few battles lately, especially last week against um, Avon. And, and the defense has shown up. Maslin has not been in a ball game for a while. They have, they have really put it on folks in the, in, the, uh, in the postseason here. Can they hang in this kind of environment for four quarters? And, you know, obviously both defenses can make it happen, but it's a matter of uh, who can outlast the other at this point. And if, if Hoping can eliminate some mistakes, they're feeling like they, they may have the upper hand knowing that they've been down this road before. Both teams' defenses have only given up double-digit points four times this season. Seven points a game in the postseason for Hoban's defense. 6.5 points a game given up for Maslin's defense. The team, the team, the team. Well, the offense has got to get it going, too. <laughs> Curtis Jackson, Eric Elwell, have you squared away with news and weather on the other side of the board. Stay with us. After working in another area, I was really excited about the opportunity to come back to a place where I spent over a decade. When it came time to plant roots and start a family, we wanted to do it right here in Ohio. This is where I learned my values. This is where I learned my appreciation for television news. What excites me most about it is being able to tell people stories. I spent a number of years in Cleveland and Cincinnati, and it's given me an opportunity to see every corner of the state. I want to empower our communities and redefine what a news channel can be. I'll be here to hear what's on your mind. Take this time to talk and get it right. You know I'll be there all your life When you need me, I'll be by your side Little everyday conversations about the dangers of underage drinking can make a big difference in a child's life. I found hope in the midst of an overwhelming situation. Alcoholism is a disease that can affect any family. Everyone suffers, but there is help and hope at Al-Anon Family Groups. Al-Anon gave me my life back. I'm a better father and husband. Are you in an overwhelming situation because of someone else's drinking? Al-Anon and Alateen can help. Local and virtual meetings are available. Maybe one could work for you. Call 1-866-200-0033 or visit alanon.org slash hope. So this is Eva and she goes everywhere with me. Like her, I have this innate sense of curiosity. I really like meeting new people. I love to explore. And right now, I'm trying to travel to every national park across the country. Every morning, that same curiosity is what drives me as a journalist. Second News One, I'm Sophia Constantine. It really fuels the type of stories that we do. It defines us as Ohioans. And it's why I'm so excited to call this place home. At the half in the Division II state championship game between Hoban and Maslin. I'm Curtis Jackson. We're going to get you back out for the second half at Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium soon.
But first, let's take a look at some stories making headlines around Ohio. House Republicans are pushing to formalize an impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden. They now want to strengthen their subpoenas and compel testimony after the White House told Congress the inquiry lacks constitutional legitimacy without a formal vote. This, as the president's son, Hunter Biden, says he is willing to testify publicly instead of a private deposition. Republicans are holding a key conference meeting on Friday to try to convince the party to get on board. A New York appeals court reinstated a gag order barring former President Donald Trump from commenting about court personnel in his New York civil fraud trial. Now, this comes two weeks after a judge had put that order on hold. The judge imposed the order back on October 3rd after Trump posted a derogatory comment about the judge's law clerk on social media. New York Attorney General Letitia James alleges that Trump exaggerated his wealth on financial statements and used those statements to secure loans and make deals. Trump denies any wrongdoing. That's a look at your top stories. Now let's head over to the Weather Center. Eric Elwell standing by with a quick check of the forecast, Chief. We've had some pretty nice weather for tonight's game, and we've got some nice weather continuing for the second half, but unfortunately things may change for tomorrow's games as we do have rain on the way, and it will make for a soggy Friday morning. Showers will gradually taper off somewhat as we get into Friday afternoon. Again, for the evening, pretty quiet, a lot of cloud cover spreading in, but notice the rain comes in here in the morning. It's going to be raining pretty well, so allow yourself a little extra time for the morning commute. It'll be wet. Showers taper off to just scattered sprinkles and light rain as we head into Friday night. Still not quite done with the rain, though. I think there's another wave of some showers that'll come through Friday night as well. But for the night tonight, dry here early, but rain coming in in the morning. Temperatures will be right around 40 degrees for the night, back into the 50s, but a wet day Friday. Thanks, Eric. After the break, we're going to get you back out to our championship game day crew. You're watching the Division II OHSAA State Championship game right here on Spectrum News 1. Sunday mornings, take an in-depth look at your community. In Focus with Mike Kallmeyer, a half-hour show dedicated to the important issues. Driven to bring decision makers together and committed to elevating discussion and debate. Your community, your state, your show. In Focus with Mike Kallmeyer, Sunday mornings at 1030 on Spectrum News 1. Also available on the Spectrum News app. Spectrum business is made to work just like your small business. Made to overcommit and overcome. Made to log in and ship out. Made to streamline productivity. Made to reassess, readapt, then relaunch. And made to do it all with fast, easy to use, ultra reliable internet, phone, and mobile services. All working together to connect every aspect of your business. We sold out in an hour. Nice work. You navigate one challenge after another, so you need a seamless network made to do the same. Spectrum Business, made to work. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. So this is Eva, and she goes everywhere with me. Like her, I have this innate sense of curiosity. I really like meeting new people, I love to explore, and right now I'm trying to travel to every national park across the country. Every morning, that same curiosity is what drives me as a journalist. News One, I'm Sophia Constantine. It really fuels the type of stories that we do. It defines us as Ohioans, and it's why I'm so excited to call this place home. Now that the state championships are underway, it's an opportunity to hear from the OHSAA on how the 2023-2024 athletic school year is going. Our Ashley Collins is with Bo Rugg in Canton. All right, thank you. Here with Bo Rugg now. And what a game to start this state championship weekend with here. It's a great kickoff uh, for, for our seven championship games. Uh, electric uh, stadium today. Uh, a lot of people, uh, a lot of fun. 
Uh, it's just really neat to see it kick off. So other than this weekend, obviously we're starting here on a Thursday. When you look at the playoffs throughout, Fridays have been exclusively. Why, why was that important to do that then? Well, it was really important to our coaches. And our coaches really uh, are, are people of, of they, they're creatures of habit. And uh, really, if they play Friday nights, they have Saturday off. They get back in and look at film on Sunday. They're back at school at Monday. If they play Saturday, they don't have that day. And it's really important to them and was really important to them. And they made their case, and, and I agreed with them. When you look at the playoffs as a whole, the kind of feedback that you've gotten with the number of playoff qualifiers. Yeah, you know, it's the neatest thing for us always is we had 10 teams uh, from seeds 13 to 15 that won in the first round. And you talk to those teams and they had that opportunity. Oh, if they wouldn't have had that opportunity, we have a 12 seed in the championship game. Uh, those kids uh, have new life. It's great opportunity and that's what we're all about. We've talked before about this. I think each time that I've actually spoke with you throughout these and the shortage in officiating when it comes to it and the kind of the steps that the OHSAA takes to recruit. Yeah, uh, you know, it's kind of a multifaceted approach. The first thing we did was really get all of our classes online and that helped us a lot. We got a lot of interest in officiating. So we debunked the myth that there's no interest. But now we've got to get them from that interest onto the field. And we really need our local associations and, and some of our, our schools are helping us get them some experience to get them on the field. So it's really a collective effort and it's uh, been successful so far. We want to keep it going. Hoban on the board with the safety 7-2 at the half. Back out to Canton to Michael, Ryan, and Ashley on the other side of the break. There can be a lot of noise out there when it comes to politics. On Capitol this week, we're going beyond that. We try to make sure that we don't just tell people what's happening, but we analyze the legislation and we're able to give them a good sense for what it will ultimately mean for them and for their community. Right here on Capitol This Week, Wednesdays at 7 and 11 p.m., available on all of your favorite devices, exclusively on Spectrum. When you buy Spectrum Mobile for just $29.99 a month, you get a second line for free. So get one line for yourself and a free line for your devoted friend. Friend? Friend. 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 Or you can get one line for yourself and one line for your kid. Sold. Or both lines for yourself. I use one for business and another for business. I do a lot of business. Get one line of Unlimited for $29.99 and get a second line free for 12 months. Call, click, or visit a Spectrum store today. I don't remember how it started. Not the bad. Oh Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. The people of Ohio have the opportunity to wake up and start fresh. We want to be a different kind of news channel, putting storytelling and community first. Well, it's really humbling to be invited to our neighbors' homes and help them plan their day. Thank you so much for joining us this morning on Spectrum News One. I'm Sophia Constantine. Your morning on Spectrum News One, weekdays 5 to noon, exclusively on Spectrum. A face mask keeps Maslin in business. That's the difference we have in Canton. Cav, Michael, and Ash now on the other side of the grid. Enjoy the second half. I'm here today in Columbus where the community is gathering for their event. At Spectrum News, we're committed to our communities around the clock, delivering stories that inspire and news that matters in your community. Our journalists are dedicated to bringing you trusted, balanced local news every day. And now, Spectrum Internet-only customers, you can watch Spectrum News 1 on your TV, connecting you to your community 24-7. Spectrum News, now streaming 
exclusively for Spectrum customers. Spectrum Mobile is giving you one free mobile line when you buy one unlimited line for $29.99. So I can get two lines for the price of one? That's right, for just $29.99. This is the best deal in mobile. But is the service reliable? Absolutely. Spectrum Mobile is super reliable, coast to coast. Get one line for $29.99 and the second line is free. All with no taxes or hidden fees. Switch to Spectrum Mobile Unlimited for $29.99 a month and get a second unlimited line free for 12 months. Call 1-844-882-2999. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Your evening on Spectrum News One is Ohio's source for local news that matters to you. We bring new perspectives and in-depth coverage of the day's biggest stories. We're here for you, sharing stories that inspire with news that keeps you informed and prepared for your tomorrow. Plus, our weather experts bring you your latest accurate neighborhood forecast every 10 minutes with our Weather on the Watch. Watch your evening on Spectrum News 1 weeknight starting at 4. The OHSAA Football State Championships on Spectrum News 1 are presented by Baldwin Wallace University, a confident choice for exceptional learning. Learn more at bw.edu. By Spectrum Mobile. Save up to 60% on your wireless bill with the nation's fastest growing mobile provider. Join the millions that have already switched. And by the Spectrum News app. Watch live news anywhere, anytime. Explore stories that matter to you, plus the latest weather every 10 minutes. Available on all of your favorite devices, including Apple TV and Roku. Tremendous look as you see all the pictures that uh, make Tom Benson the Hall of Fame Stadium and the nearby Pro Football Hall of Fame a must-see, must-do for you and the family. It is the site, of course, of our Division II state championship game uh, here uh, tonight. Maslin, Akron Hoban, Michael Regai, my partner, Ryan Cavanaugh. Hey, look, now, this defense, this, we, look, we knew the Maslin defense would uh, strangle you and doesn't give it up very much. And we saw exactly that in the first half from Nate Moore's defensive unit as they are as advertised. Well, they're creating turnovers. This was a big one. Hoban really only got their offense going in the first drive. They have 71 yards on the ground. Juice Boykin has completed three passes for a whopping 11 yards. 82 total yards of offense. Yards, everything hard to come by. And this has been the story. Two turnovers and one block punt. And Masson was able to turn that fumble into a touchdown. Right, let's take a look at these first half numbers. They're brought to you by the good folks at Toyota. So with offense hard to come by, uh, again, defensively, it's going to be which football team continues their strong defensive play. That's probably going to come out with a D2 state title. Yeah, well, the score is 7-2, to so I feel like it's the bottom of the fourth inning, Reg. But the way these teams are playing, it feels like it's the end of the eighth round. These are two heavyweight champions. They're punching each other in the mouth. Neither one's going away. And I'm excited to see what happens in the second uh, half here and figure out can either of these teams generate enough offense to take the state championship? Yeah, well, let's find out as we uh, get closer to that and what the uh, the minds of the head coaches think. Ashley Collins with Akron Hoban head coach Tim Terrell. Ashley? All right, thanks, Michael. Coach, obviously this is what everyone was expecting, a tough game in the trenches, of course. What's going to be key now in this second half against this very good Maslin team? You know, I think the biggest thing is we can't give up any big plays, you know, from our defense. They've done a great job so far. We just can't give up, you know, the, the big play right here in the second half. And offensively, we just can't turn the football over. That, that, that put our defense in a bad situation on why they score. We just... Bob Punt, he just dropped it. So I, I, I don't know what he was what he was doing. I, I was talking to the O-line. Um, and then we, we, we had two other turnovers. We can't do that against this team. You know, we're able to move it and do what we want to do, but turning the football over just kills us. Coach, thanks. Good luck in the second half. Guys. All right, Ashley, do appreciate that. And uh, 
I think Tim Terrell said we cannot turn the football over three different times if we're looking to win this football game as he just chatted with uh, Ashley Collins. You think he, you don't think he wants to turn the ball uh, over? I don't think so. No. Pick up on that. It's not a recipe for winning, partner. Tonight's second half kickoff is uh, being brought to you by McAfee Heating and Air. 24 minutes in the books as uh, we uh, look at that's still an autumnal moon here. Canton, Ohio at uh, Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium. We hope you're enjoying this one tonight as we kick off championship weekend. Our producer, uh, Mike Bachman, our director, uh, Mike Simons, all of our terrific crew, the guys and gals in the truck doing a fabulous job for you as yeah, state championship weekend on the football field. Nothing like it here in the state of Ohio. The Massillon Tigers only gave up that safety in the first half are going to get their hands on the football first to start this second half. Ricardo Wells, the deep man, but that line drive shot is uh, taken uh, by Tyler Hackenbrack. Hackenbrack, good to see him on the football field as he took a couple of shots uh, that made him miss a few plays in the opening half. All right, my partner Ryan Kavanaugh's keys to the game. Ryan, what did you have and how did things uh, play out for you in the first half? Well, for Hoban, I think they're one of two. They, they haven't really been able to get the run going outside of that, and but they have contained Dewan Owens. Maslin, they haven't really attempted to pass, but you know, winning at the line of scrimmage, they're definitely doing that on the defensive side of the ball. Well, the Maslin Tigers will uh, start offensively, and again, it's that quarterback keep, but I tell you what, after the first couple of snaps that Massillon quarterback Dewan Owens found a lot of operating room, nothing has been there. As again, he is uh, hit and rocked by Cartier Williams, 190 pound linebacker. What a play by Williams. Excellent job taking advantage of a crease and getting in on Dewan Owens. One way to stop a threat like Owens is get to him before he can get going. Second and 11, run that jet sweep. Trying to get outside the numbers, that football's out. What a tremendous hit from Tyson Campbell as he turned upside down Jacquez Carter. Football came out after the tremendous hit by Campbell. Watch it again. Campbell shoots the lane from the free safety position. What a job. Catches him upside down. That ball comes out. That is a free ball. And for Maslin, what a break as the ball slips out of bounds. The Central Michigan commit. You know, this guy, Redhead, offers from Michigan, Power 5 schools right. like that. Yeah. Went to went to Central, loves Chip McElwain. Yeah. Uh, committed there, and they're expecting him to play early at Central Michigan. I can see why. Ryan, on a third down and four, this may move the sticks. Akron Holman just got hit with uh, an encroachment. encroachment. Defense number 11. Five-yard penalty. First down. Oh, well, if you are a fan of the Holman Knights, uh, again, you're, you're cringing right now. On a third down and four, they get hit with encroachment. It'll move the sticks. Maslin first down. That's the equivalent. How about the block by Mike Wright at the end of that play? That's the equivalent of... Uh, wide receiver jumping off sides on offense. Those yeah. sorts of things will drive a coach crazy. What a play defensively by Devin Bell, Reg. Yeah, Number back to five. that uh, right, back to that RPO ground game, and Devin Mel Bell came flying there as he timed that up, and uh, he put down the ball carrier Mylon Lennox right now. That's the second time Devin Bell's done that. You would almost think that. Someone's telling him what the play is. There you go. Three tackles, two for loss. What a day, Devin Bell. 235-pounder. Owens will throw. That is hauled in. Outstanding grab by Jacquez Carter. That football was behind Carter, and he made a terrific grab while looking that football into his number seven. Degree of difficulty very high. And Jacquez Carter says, no big deal. I'll go grab that football. Owens again, though, throwing behind the receiver. The accuracy for this young man has been a little bit off today. It has. 
I mean, this is a tremendously talented dual threat quarterback, but tonight the accuracy on uh, his throws has not been where he wants it. Well, that's off. Uh, might be movement. Don't see a flag. Oh, it just got a first down. Now that, that, DeWan Owens, that straight quarterback run, there was no ball fake there at all. That was a straight quarterback run. That's been the best offensive plays for Maslin tonight. Take a look right here. You're going to see movement right here. Right there. That's a, that's a penalty flag, Reg. And officials did not, uh, didn't see it. Maslin, the beneficiary of that. Senior quarterback Dewan Owens has football team on the move off that play fake. Owens trying to get outside the numbers again. That's a terrific pursuit and takedown from Tyson Campbell. Campbell along with Devin Bell. Both on the defensive side. Their pursuit capabilities, Ryan, so impressive. Well, they're taking proper angles and they can run. We saw early in this game, Dewan Owens looked to be faster than a lot of the Hoban Knights, but because of the angle changes and the pursuit in waves, they've been able to slow Owens down. Second down to nine now. Owens has got four wide receivers to play with. Go to the RPO, and again, the defense of Akron Hoban just continues to step into gaps like Eli Lee just did and make big time hits. Look at the junior filling the hole. And he just gets inside of number 75, Mike Looney. There was a little fold block, and Looney didn't identify Eli Lee before Lee could get past him and make that tackle. A uh, big play for both units here. The black and orange of Maslin. They're looking at a third and ten. The line to make is at the 43-yard line now of the Hoban Knights. Maslin's got to be careful with the football here, Michael. You can't afford a turnover, especially the way their defense has been playing. Owen's going to take a shot middle, and it was almost picked off. Uh, Juice Hill, or rather Rock Hill, excuse me, had his hands on the football there, and then kind of, he sort of had this pick as he grabbed his helmet after it got out of his hands. Wow, Rock Hill almost brought that one in. And when I said you can't afford to have a turnover, this wouldn't have been that bad because it would ultimately be more of a punt. Uh, of course, you'd have to tackle Rock Hill, but now the punting unit's out. And the return man is up just about where that pass fell incomplete. Tyler Hackenbrack will hit this from his 38-yard line. Good boot again by Hackenbrack as uh, that drove back Hoban's uh, Parker Falkenstein for the fair catch at the 13-yard line. Let's take a look at the Akron-Hoban run game. They had that real good first possession, Ryan. But since then, though, it's been quiet tonight. Well, and we haven't seen Caleb Jones since the first drive and certainly since the first quarter. Five carries, 38 yards. Feaster has not been able to get going. Juice Boykin has not been able to get going. He's only got 10. Feaster, three, four carries, rather, for three yards. About midway through, or closing in on midway through this third quarter, trying to get outside the numbers. That's a solid six yards on that carry that came from Xavier Williams. Williams wears that number two. Fleet doesn't need a whole lot of room to bust one, and the Hoban Knights are hoping that becomes reality for them with Xavier Williams. Well, Xavier Williams is probably the second fastest player on the team behind Rock Hill, and he was pretty close. They're trying to have a little change of pace Jones and Feaster similar. Williams more of a speedy slasher. Got six on second and four. That throw. Did it get picked off? No. It one hopped in front of Zach Liebler, the senior DB. But again, though, Ryan, the uh, the throw from quarterback Juice Boykin nowhere near his wide receiver. Liebler, there were two guys running slants and he threw it in between both of them. Liebler, he's a returning starter from last year and I love the quote from Coach Moore this week. He punches above his weight, runs well, tackles well. That time almost had the third 
turnover, second interception for the Tigers. Can the Hoban Knights cash out this third down at four? The line to make is up at the 24-yard line. And we're going to get a timeout. Time Hoban. A timeout first from uh, head coach Tim Terrell. All right, we'll take it with Tim Terrell and his Hoban Knights. 7-2. Maslin holding this five-point lead. When we get you it's back on Spectrum News 1. After working in another area, I was really excited about the opportunity to come back to a place where I spent over a decade. When it came time to plant roots and start a family, we wanted to do it right here in Ohio. This is where I learned my values. This is where I learned my appreciation for television news. What excites me most about it is being able to tell people stories. I spent a number of years in Cleveland and Cincinnati, and it's given me an opportunity to see every corner of the state. I want to empower our communities and redefine what a news channel can be. From coast to coast, you've seen us around. We live and work in the communities we serve. Our commitment runs deep. We're invested here, creating good jobs and supporting small businesses, many of which we're proud to call customers. You count on us to keep you connected to what matters most. And we're committed to delivering you the best internet, TV, and mobile service. We're Spectrum, connecting the places we all call home. When I first saw Turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with Turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. 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 Weather can be beautiful, inconvenient, and at times, powerful. And it affects everything we do. At Spectrum News One, our weather experts update you with the information and the context you need so you can better plan your day. And we do it every 10 minutes. We're the calm in the storm. Weather on the ones on Spectrum News One, exclusively on Spectrum. And get your weather anytime on the new Spectrum News app. The OHSAA State Championships on Spectrum News 1. The rights to this broadcast have been granted by the OHSAA, representing 822 high schools across Ohio and more than 350,000 boys and girls who participate annually in OHSAA-sponsored athletic competitions. Any rebroadcast or republication of the programming without the written consent of Spectrum and the OHSAA is strictly prohibited. Excitement level continues to rise each and every year. Nothing like it. The OHSAA State Football Championships, late November, early December. The very, very best. Running that jet sweep now on this first down call, rather the third down call. And uh, on that Hoban Knights carry was uh, Rock Hill and uh, Rock Hill was able to uh, move those sticks to get that first down. That's big for Holden here. As, as we were saying, Ryan, before we went to break, offensively it has been a struggle since their first possession of the night when they rolled about 55 yards and got into Holden, uh, uh, rather a massive territory before the turnover. Again, stay with the ground game. That's Xavier Williams on the carry. Not much there for Williams. Got Maverick Clark and Dorian Pringle coming up to make the play. But how about this offensive line from Hoban? Officials timeout. Yep, average. About, there you go, average. It's not about it is. It's 288 pounds. And the sophomore is number 70, Sam Greer. He's the big fella in the back right there to your right. Last year was penciled in to be a starter at left tackle. And this, he just grew too fast. And he had to take some time out. They, but he had offers, Division I Power 5 offers, to play uh, before ever taking a snap in high school as a true freshman. He's also the center of the basketball team. That yeah, we the saw state. him. We saw him last oh. year. Have a terrific state tournament, right? Oh, my gosh. Let's take a look at that. You're going to know exactly who Sam Greer is. 
uh, because, well, he's the biggest guy in the court. There he is wearing number 41 down low. But when you're his size, 6'6", 295, you know, I mentioned the Division I Power Five offers. He also has, among other schools, Kent State offered Sam Greer to play basketball at the next level. On the basketball court, I call him your favorite player's favorite player because when you're 6'6", 295, you can run the floor and you can shoot the three. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, so a young fella's got a uh, decision to make. Who knows? Maybe you say, well, I don't need a decision. I'll play both, which, as we know, is <laughs> very, uh, very unusual any longer when you have a football-basketball combination, especially at any level, at the D1 level. Uh, but you know what? We'll see. Young Mr. Greer said he hadn't made that decision yet. Now go back to the ground game. Run that jet sweep with some room. Move those sticks at the 35-yard line as a back-to-back -back jet sweeps. Rock Hill running that and uh, caught it big. He's had a couple of strong carries here that have brought first down. So, but well, they're trying to get the speed, and it was. I, I, I mentioned earlier that Ho, uh, Maslin may have got away with. A false start that time we talked about Sam Greer and maybe everybody was looking at the other side of the field but he had a takedown of the defensive end and this is going to be a second timeout call time out Tim Tyrell Holman their second so they're moving to football on this possession and they've got that on a uh, couple of uh, misdirections or jet sweeps that uh, have emanated from the inside of their formation and scheme. All right, let's check in uh, with Ashley Collins. Ashley? Hey, thanks, Michael. When we talk, uh, Hoban and Coach Terrell, obviously very successful, as we know. Uh, a 129 and 21 record in 11 seasons. He said the biggest reason for his success is that people still buy into what he's saying. He kind of laughed when he said it. The coaches, the players, they still buy in. But he's constantly changing things every year. He does not stick to the same thing, which he thinks has been super helpful. And we don't talk about last year or anything like that. Their own team, own personalities, and he just continues to build around that each and every year. Thank you, Ashley. Yeah, both these head coaches have known him for a long, long time. Uh, both uh, Tim Terrell of Hope and Nate Moore of Maslin have, have been just absolutely phenomenal in program building. That football came out. Stay with the ground game. Coffee net up was Xavier Williams. And on it for Hoban, uh, recovering the fumble was a Dion Rogers. Now the fullback, what a job by Dorian Pringle. Number three, again, we weren't sure Pringle was going to play. And, right. You know, Coach Moore said that he's one of the best players he's ever coached. He plays on both sides of the ball tonight. We've only seen him on defense. He's a BG commit. BG commit, going to play for Scott Left. What a ball hawk, too. Yeah. Are right. you running back or receiver? You better get that football secure. Or he's got a chance to rip it away from you. On second down and five, gaping hole. First down on that strong power run for Hoban as on that carry, as we said, uh, was uh, Caleb Jones. Jones, well, he hit that A-gap, Ryan Cavanaugh, and that interior O-line for the Hoban Knights opened that up beautifully. Well, this is kind of the M.O. of Hoban, which is lean on him, lean on him, lean on him, and eventually they win the battle of attrition. Now, Maslin, <laughs> like I said at halftime, Reg, they're punching back. Both of these teams are throwing haymakers at each other. 295 pounds senior, and Nate towns it over to football. Another strong run. Break into the corner. It opens space. Big time run. Grabbing up a lot of territory. That was a juice Boykin. Nice run by Boyd can get to the sidelines. He hasn't been able to get loose and watch number 50 will Satterlight Satterwhite look at him lock up 
what are we, we're talking 15, 25 yards downfield. Will Satterwhite, the University of Tennessee commit. Excellent effort by, oh, we got a, a flag. It's coming back though. He step, stepped out of bounds. Yeah, at the 40 yard line, as you see, uh, Tim Terrell discussing it with the uh, the side judge and the back judge. Did he step out of bounds? Yeah, Ooh, he did. That's a good call. At the 40-yard line. First down at 10 for the 40. For the Hoban Knights. Whistles, flags, prior to the snap. False start Dead ball. on Hoban. Office number 54. Five-yard penalty. First down. A couple of those uh, mistakes, Ryan, that we've talked about. You know, Hoban at times has had trouble getting out of their own way, Michael. It's like you get two steps forward and then one step back. This has been their best drive since the opening drive of this game. But now first and 15. And this mass on defense, they have been bend but don't break. It's hard to score on these guys. First and 15 with 435 left. Now we've got more flags and whistles. Substitution of fraction. Offense, five yard penalty. Still first down. Well, you see the look on uh, Tim Terrell's face. I mean, Ryan, uh, they. You know, they had this football advance 25 yards further downfield into Massillon territory. And these mistakes, miscues, penalties, formation problems, you name it, really putting a dagger into this drive. Yeah, it's really hard. You can't make those mistakes against a team as talented as Massillon. At first and 20. Excellent cutback in open space. That's a strong run from Caleb Jones. Running off right tackle. That's behind Nate Cross, the guard, and Satterwhite. Oh, they put Big Sam Greer, number 70, over there as well. See Satterwhite come and kick out. Nice tackle defensively. Adonis Vaughn. Bottom line, on first and 20, they got 16 of it back. Caleb Jones carrying the football on second and four. Not much room there again as they try the left side with Caleb Jones. And coming up with that muscle and hit is Dorian Pringle. Uh, we Pringle has been just superb here. Kind of at times a one-man wrecking crew. Oh, he is as advertised. Coach. Nate Moore said he's strong and he plays strong. He checks every box you're looking for in a football player. Speed, instincts, awareness, and the ability to take you down at any time. Big third down for both teams. We thought this would be played in the trenches tonight. Third and three. Not a lot of room. That massive defense came up and put it on. Quarterback. Juice Boykin again, as in on that Massillon hit was Ryan Page, the free safety. And look at number 16 come up. Boom. Maverick Clark was there as well, but it's all about Ryan Page dragging him down. His father was a coach here, returning starter. Coach Moore says he's always lined up right, and that's what you get with a coach's son. Fourth and five, Hoban, offense stays on the field. What does Tim Terrell have dialed up on fourth and five with his team down by five? It's gonna cost them five more. More flags, whistles. It has, uh, it's kind of, that's a start. Offense number 36, five yard penalty, still fourth down. Kind of turning into a nightmare for Tim Terrell trying to get his offense. Just flat out lined up. Think about Ryan, you're ready to get you going for it on fourth and five. You get another false start. It turns into fourth and ten. Now you're gonna get the football up. Reg, they had 15 yards of penalties, three offsides in that, not that drive, but that set of downs since first down. Short punt hanging high and gonna get down right at the nine-yard line by Holbin's uh, Elbert Hill. Change of possession again. I'll give the football back. 
to the Massillon Tigers. Weather in Ohio is unpredictable. We know that. You can always count on weather on the ones. And his forecast always less than 10 minutes away. Accurate, experienced team of meteorologists have the latest forecast insights and the perspective you can trust every 10 minutes continuously during severe weather. Count on it always. Weather on the ones only on Spectrum News 1. Great to have you along tonight. Michael Regai, my partner Ryan Cavanaugh. As you get a look at that Holman bench as the football turned over again and punted away after an unsuccessful offensive trip. And that's not again, it's the Holman Knights defense flat out just trying to hang in this one and keep their offense, give them a chance at a one possession game as they have been all over. Massillon quarterback Dewan Owens tonight. Well, it's it's time for Massillon to, to respond and get, pick up some first downs here and give their defense a bit of a break. That was a long, almost quarter long drive for Hoban. On second and ten. Run that inside jet sweep and to see the shot that was put on uh, Jameer Gamble, the wide receiver and running back Ricky Williams. With that 230 pounds and laid out gamble. Ricky Williams was hit this Reg, a wide receiver his first two years at Hoban. And Coach Terrell says, you know, 6-2, it's gonna be tough to make it at the next level or even the next level. But he said, You trust me, become a linebacker, you can play as football as long as you want. It's that sort of physicality that Ricky Williams brings. Trust is shown. Owens on third and seven. Going to put it up in traffic. He better thank his wide receiver because uh, for quarterback Dewan Owens, Braylon Tolles turned into a defensive back and helped him avoid what was going to be a pick. Yeah, Rock Hill was in position to make this play second near pick. What a job just from Owens and there's another shot from Ricky Williams and you you're right the MVP of that play was Braylon Tolls line drive kick and a line drive shot by Tyler Hackenbrack that football is out it appears it appears that the Hoban Knights got on that as coming up with it was Jaden uh, excuse me was um, Parker Falkenstein. As Tyson Campbell, you know, I was expecting a fair catch here because of where the Maslin Tigers are, bearing down on him. Doesn't catch it clean, then absorbs a hit. Parker Falkenstein, lucky to fall on that. So yet another, yet another offensive opportunity, trailing by five at seven to two with excellent field position for that young man. Quarterback uh, Juice Boykin and this offense of Hoven. Stay with the ground game. Maybe a couple yard carry uh, for Caleb Jones. Jones got dragged down. Let's call it second and eight. Might be the last snap as we're down to 15 seconds. And I think it's going to be in quarter number three. This offense for the Knights are going to head over with the uh, with him coach uh, Tim Terrell and talk about it as you saw both Nate Moore and Tim That's Terrell the the third 36 minutes in the books we told you this very well could be a defensive slugfest That's absolutely what we have Maslin with a 5 point 7 to 2 lead on Hoban no go away We'll come back to the fourth quarter on Spectrum News 1. Our community is incredibly dynamic and diverse in many ways, and so is our weather. That's why at Spectrum News 1, we make sure you have the accurate information to help you plan your day every day. We will be tracking some changes. We know Ohio weather can change quickly. 
And when it does, we're here tracking it all so you know what to expect next. We have beautiful weather across Ohio. Watch the Spectrum News 1 weather experts on your TV and on the go with the Spectrum News app, exclusively on Spectrum. Prince, who needs your help? Click on this link. Avoid lawsuits. Click here to enter your social security Earn number. Nine hundred dollars a week. Apply here. You are under investigation by tax professionals. Your accounts have been frozen. Type in your. Spectrum One automatically blocks threats to your devices before they ever get to you. Who wants pizza? I love pizza. That's state-of-the-art security. That's Spectrum One. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. It doesn't feel like a job to me. Journalism is my passion. I started out as an actress and singer, which is a, the typical way to get into broadcasting. Whether it's journalism, singing, acting, writing, it's all about storytelling. These are the I guess I fell in love with news because it's the real story of us. It's the real story of community. I'm Mary Lee Melendez, anchor of Spectrum News One. Like a high flying offensive football, this is, uh, yeah, not been your likey tonight. I uh, really, really enjoying how strong both defenses have played tonight. All right, you take a look at the numbers after 36 minutes of football. Maslin had the pick, fumble recovery defensively. Holman recorded their sixth safety of the year tonight. And the Hoban Knights with the football on second down and eight. Back to the ground game. A little bit of crease off the left side. Um, that carry for uh, Caleb Jones. Jones, 185 pounder. So we're underway in the fourth quarter. You know, I know we're in the Buckeye State here, Reg, but somewhere Iowa football fans are loving this. This is this is a typical Iowa game. Tough defense, low scoring, physical. Great line play. Look for number three, Dorian Pringle, and in black to come up and make a hit here. Someone's got to take this game, Reg. Yeah, this is third down and four for Holman quarterback Dewan Owens. That high snap. Owens has got a first down. Owens with speed. A flag has been thrown behind the formation. I mean, let me check that. Uh, Boykin on that carry. Tylen Juice Boykin holding offense number 24 10 yard penalty still turned down. So Boykin's tremendous run is going to be taken back by Dominic Bush. Bush who plays the uh, the fullback role, the big back in that offense. And Ryan, that flag flew by the time that uh, that quarterback Juice Boykin had hit the numbers on that left side of the football field, started to turn it up. Yeah, there's like a 95% chance it's on the offense when the flag falls there. Football move back to the 45 yard line. What does Juice Boykin and the Hoban Knight offense have? They went to that play that has been good to them tonight as they got uh, Elbert Hill rolling in open space. Now, Hill got inside the 45 to the 44. And Ryan, the down box moves the fourth down. Down by five as we're inside 11 minutes left. You know that Tim Terrell and his offense going to line up and go for this to try to pick up the first down. I think they're going to just run the quarterback Boykin here. 
No running backs. This is Boykin. Now, uh, there was a whistle that stopped that. You're not going to believe this, but I think it's a false start on Hogan. Dead ball. False start. Office number 50. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Ryan, I'm not trying to belabor this, but uh, again, look, if if Holbin is not able to come back, take the lead, possibly win this football game, it's all about these repeated miscues offensively. Yeah, they're playing against two opponents right now. One's across the sideline, and one is themselves, and instead of going for it on fourth and short, they're punting and Maslin. That's football it go. bouncing. Did it get in the end zone? Yeah, it did. It's going to come out. What a tremendous job by Xavier Williams. Williams tried to get that down before it got to the goal line in the end zone. As you see, he wasn't able to do so. On the Massillon Tigers, how did they get that seven on the board? Well, it began with this the big block punt from Chase Bond. And then the face mask, as you saw, Dewan Owens get absolutely yanked down to the ground, and then that touchdown run through that uh, big crease that got Mylon Lennox into the end zone. That's the only touchdown we've had through 38 minutes of football. That straight quarterback run. Powering his way again uh, through that hole. Dewan Owens. Beautiful blocking on the edge. And Owens finally catches a crease. Gets into the open field. Look at the block. Boom. It was Lennox. Well, Lennox has been stellar in the way that he's uh, put pads on defenders. Well, that first down carry for... Massillon quarterback Dewan Owens, the 200 pound senior QB. Owens again. This time he maybe got one as he was dragged down, as in on that uh, Holbin hit was Cartier Williams, the linebacker. And I uh, got some help from uh, Ricky Williams, who wears number three, Cartier Williams at number 28, Ricky Williams at number three. Take a look at the quarterback comparison here, Reg. Boykin and Owens. Neither of them have been able to compete with where they've been all season, which has been excellent. Set a push from Owens. Yeah, got a real good push. Uses that 210 pounds effectively at second down and nine. And again, this uh, this Maslin offensive line. And now look, they're bringing the defensive guys in on offense. Beautiful block. And look at the leg drive from Owens. But you're going to see number 92 come in the game. That's Chase Bond, the NC State commit. And of course, you got the big fella, Mike Wright, number 45. He's going to be sidecar right. Big Owens. play. Yep, big play. Third down at two. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. The Hoban Knights defensively will push that back. That's a strong hit by Ricky Williams, the young man we just mentioned, as he was able to put Mylon Lennox and push him back. Well, Hoban's going to run to the right behind Mike Wright, number 45. Good block, but Ricky Williams plays off it beautifully. Mike Looney got into Williams and bounced off of him, and Williams brought Lennox down. Hoban's going to get the ball back. Fake. They snapped that to the interior and coming up short for Maslin on the head punt fake was Sean Robinson. Robinson, the up man. Wow. How about this call? I actually believe this was a favorable. Look where he goes down. What a play. What a gutsy call from Coach Nate Moore. When I said someone's going to go out there and have to take this game, Coach Moore said, well, let's go for it and do it. That, Ryan, and uh, again, Coach Nate Moore looking at uh, almost three and a half quarters and saying, by making that call, I believe in my defense. I trust in my defense. We're in the middle of the football field, 42-yard line here, but, I mean, 
That is uh, that is a big time confidence statement by Nate Moore in doing that. Well, it's great if it works and if it doesn't, well, but yeah. you're right, it's faith in your defense. And I think Hoban's taking their third timeout. Timeout. Yep. That'll be it. Hoban. That is our third and final timeout in the half. Now you wonder as you look at Tim Terrell as they're using that final timeout when you're down by five. We'll discuss that in greater length when we come back. The Hoban Knights have the football down by five when we come back. the entire process of storytelling. Every day is another day in history and I get a front row seat and it's a big honor and something I care about. From the things that we do in the studio to what we do in the field, everybody has a story to tell here in Ohio and it's my goal to be able to tell as many of those stories and meet as many of those people and share in their experiences and learn from them. Thanks for being with us here on Spectrum News One. I'm Chuck Ringwald. They say the best things in life are free. That's why Spectrum Mobile is giving you one free mobile line when you buy one unlimited line for $29.99. Hey, so I can get two lines for the price of one? That's right, for just $29.99. <laughs> Switch to Spectrum Mobile Unlimited for $29.99 a month and get a second unlimited line free for 12 months with no contracts. Call 1-844-537-2999, visit Spectrum.com slash get connected or Spectrum store today. It's the best deal in mobile. Free mobile sounds good. But is the service reliable? Absolutely. Spectrum Mobile is super reliable, coast to coast. Okay, but what's the catch? Is it contracts? No contracts, no catch. Get one line for $29.99 and the second line is free. All with no taxes or hidden fees. Whew. Man, I'm switching to Spectrum. You see it? Switch to Spectrum Mobile Unlimited for $29.99 a month and get a second unlimited line free for 12 months. Call 1-844-537-2999. In the best deal in mobile, switch, switch to Spectrum. Spectrum. The family's visit to the forest inspired a beautiful question. Mother, mother, am I a tree? You tell me to stand tall. You tell me to stay rooted. I think I am a tree. My child, my child, of course you are. But what kind of tree will you be? The kind to hug or the kind to climb? Doesn't matter what you choose, so long as you choose to be a tree that's kind. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. A lot of tension, a lot of pressure here inside Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium. Great to have you with us. Common opponents for both the Hoban Knights and the Massillon Tigers. Well, that would be the St. Edward Eagles. And a win. One with a win. One with a tight loss. Now, what does head coach Tim Terrell and his offense have here? Trailing by five. They're going to go to the ground game. It's a strong five-yard carry as uh, that was on that first down call was, uh, again, Caleb Jones. Jones has been the bellwether in this running game tonight for Tim Terrell and the Hoban Knights. Caleb Jones closing in on a 100-yard performance as we took a look at the veteran head coach. Tim Terrell with his five titles. State runners up. Looking to throw the football. Just nothing there. That massive of defense is all over that. Tried to bring out the gadget play. Did Hoban for Peyton Cook. Ryan, he was looking to throw the football, and it's going to cost again. It's going to cost Hoban here. But there's a flag, too, Michael. Flag down, and yeah, they they did not. What Peyton Cook needs to do right there is throw it out of bounds instead of taking a loss. And we'll see what the flag is. If that's a hold, it's going to be costly for Hoban. Holding. Office number 14. That throw has been declined. Take Rizzo to play. Results in third down. Nate Moore said, uh, no, no, I like that result of the play. It's going to bring up Ryan Kavanaugh. Third down and 13 now. So Nate Moore said, uh, I like the way my defense is playing. Uh, I'm going to make you only have probably this one down to convert a third and 13. 
That's why I'm glad I'm not a head coach. I, I was thinking he would accept it and keep pushing him back. I would have made it second in about 20 some. Close to that first down. They almost picked it up on a third and 13. It's going to bring up a fourth down and one. But how about the uh, capabilities of Juice Boykin as that junior quarterback down on the turf? What an effort by this Maslin. There's Hike, uh, Hackenbranch, Cody Fair, Vito McConnell. And now, without any timeouts, Reg, Boykin's going to have to come out for a play. Yes. We're closing in on six minutes left as you see Boykin there as he was taken down. And uh, that hit was indeed Cody Fair. The 225 pound linebacker, but right now the concern is for Hoban Knights quarterback Juice Boykin, the 165 pound junior who oh. just took a what a third and 13 and got 12. I should correct myself, Michael. Mike Dane next to us just told me you can't buy your way back in with a timeout, so Boykin would have to sit regardless. The question now is who takes the snap for Hoban. We saw Peyton Cook throw the ball uh, or attempt to throw the ball earlier in this drive. I mean, you know, I think you're going to be looking at a power football run, all hands on deck. Well, it goes to show you that, uh, you know, on third and 13, getting that close to 12, huge, huge for the the Hoban offense, uh, granted, you, you don't like to see your quarterback going to have to come off the football field for a play. But this also is given a lot of time, right, for head coach Tim Terrell. Is good to see Tylen Juice Boykin on his feet. So now, now everything drifts to on fourth and a yard. If you're Tim Terrell, what are you coming up with, partner? Well, let's see who they, I think, is it Peyton Cook? Yep. This is an inverted wishbone. And a snap. Now they got Victor Clark is the quarterback. Right? Washington, your first. Victor Clark, Clark, who wears number 12. See Clark right there. He was looking like the snap was going to go to him. So Clark, the junior quarterback, and Ryan, that's, that's, that's a big young man at 225 pounds playing quarterback. It's fourth and a full yard here. So if ever you're going to, if you're, uh, if you're Tim Terrell, are you not, I mean, I, Offensive line, hey fellas, right now. Yeah, that's right. We gotta get this blocked and get a push here and move the sticks. Absolutely. I think I think Clark is just gonna turn and hand it off to the back behind him. You've got some options with that inverted wishbone. It's really it's an inverted wishbone out of the pistol. We really want to get it. But it'll be what I always like. Michael is when the offense comes up and lines lines up the defense takes a timeout and then do they come back in the same formation and they are going to fourth of the yard the quarterback is Victor Clark a 225 pound junior awaiting the snap Clark on fourth and one gonna go to the running back and Caleb Jones has moved the sticks needed one got three first down Holman right at the six minute mark and now clock turning inside six well they got the push they wanted so cody fair the tackling machine as you appropriately called him was there but the leg drive and the push from caleb jones enough for the first down boykin back in the game yeah juice boykin is back juice boykin stay with the ground game nothing there although Getting out of a tackle was Caleb Jones. Caleb Jones, Maverick Clark, the linebacker, had Jones 
in his uh, grasp, and Jones got away. Only got one, but when Clark hit him, it would have been for a two to three yard loss. Second and nine. We're coming inside five minutes left. Seven to two. Maslin with a five point lead on Holden. Encroachment on Maslin. Dead ball. Encroachment. Defense number zero. Five yard penalty. Second down. We're going to get Maverick Clark. Just made a play. Now he gives the five yards away. And I think we've got 450, just under five minutes of smash mouth football, Michael. I don't think Hoven's going to put the ball in the air unless they absolutely have to. Without question. The quarterback is Juice Boykin. Going to get the football on the run play to uh, Elbert Hill. And Hill got uh, knocked down right away. Been so impressed, Ryan, with the ability to run sideline to sideline by this Maslin defense. They are fast, Michael. They get to the ball. There's Hackenbranch. And with the clock the way it is, Hoban with no timeouts. I think Nate Moore and his Maslin Tigers are two plays away from securing their first state championship in the playoff years two down territory faking that jet sweep close to a first down has the first down does juice boykin you knew that was coming at some point michael because every time they've put rock hill in motion on that jet sweep they've given it to him including on second down here's third fake it to rock look at all the guys going that way good block by uh, dominic bush on dorian pringle great Jim block by bush yep yep and that's a tough block. Dorian Pringle, he's one of the best football players on this field. Moving clock, no timeouts left. For the Hoban Knights, stay with the ground game. Battling his way inside the 15 and getting over five again was uh, Caleb Jones. Well, you call him the bell cow, and they're going to ride the bell cow. We got coming up on three minutes left in this game you'd have to go back to 1995 when Clyde won three to zero for the, the last time a state championship was won by a team that scored less than ten. Second and five Caleb Jones is the running back this is Jones good cut Jones got taken down he probably is going to get to the nine yard line with uh, his his progress in motion let's see they can put it at the nine now they'll put it at the ten well this is interesting michael look at how far he is and then you know they do a little do -si do watch this and now he's got to give him his glove back take a look at this good to meet you i'm stealing your glove and again that was tyler hackenbrack there's hackenbrack outstanding secondary player third down and a short one Football's on the ground again. Did Hoban come up with it? That's the second time tonight that Juice Boykin in plus territory has dropped, not handled the football well. Yeah, it's just to the side. Boykin gets his hands on it. Then he loses his feet. Look how close Mike Wright, number 45, from Maslin was to recovering that and putting this game on ice. Here's your football game, folks. Trailing by five are the Hoban Knights. They're looking at a fourth and eight. Got to get to the 10 yard line. Owens going to throw end zone. It is not held on to. Incomplete. It looked like there was an opportunity for Jackson Callaway to make the grab. Tough catch yet. Yes, but it looked like he had a shot to pull it in. Unbelievable ending to this one, Michael. There's Dorian Pringle, who means so much. Boykin buys himself some time, and he gives his receiver a chance. 
and it's right in his hands, unable to hang on. Wow. No timeouts left for the Knights of Holden. Victory formation, state championship formation, as Maslin will take another knee, maybe two, and... Washington. Well, Maslin called the timeout, as you hear from our game referee, Charles Anderson. And Maslin only had 10 men on the field. So Nate Moore takes the timeout. And again, 1995, Clyde, state champion, wins 3-0. And now Maslin scoring only a touchdown is going to pull it off. Thank you to Joe Gimley from John Carroll University with that stat. And you see the consternation on the face of the Hoban Knights. And this place, if this was a dome, the top would be about to be blown off by the 14,000 Massel and Faithful that are here. Coach Nate Moore said, we've got fans flying in for this game. We want to turn Tom Benson into Paul Brown Stadium, and it sure sounds like they've done that. One of the legendary names in all of college, uh, high school football, not just the state of Ohio, looking for their first ever state championship. And the Massillon Tigers are a minute and 22 away from achieving just that. There's knee number two for their quarterback, Dewan Owens. They're feeling it on the orange and black sidelines. The Hoban Knights cannot stop the clock. And you're going to look back if you're Hoban and say, you know, we used three timeouts in the second half early. State runners up six different times. Six. The Massillon Tigers. In 1980, 82, 05, and then the three in a row, Ryan. 2018, 2019, and 2020. And now all of that is just history that the Massillon Tigers football program does not have to deal with any longer. The third most winningest program football program in the country now calls themselves state champions quarterback dewan owens and head coach nate moore it is over in tom betson hall of fame stadium the orange and black are feeling great as the vision two state champions in this 2023 O-H-S-A-A season. Look at this run, not just a state championship, an undefeated season, knocking off St. Ed's, who plays tomorrow for the Division I state championship, handing them their only loss. It, it, it was a storybook season. They had one final chapter to write, and they wrote it here tonight. Yeah, that they did. Phenomenal feeling when after so many opportunities, as we said, six times, folks, they've lost in this state championship game. The tradition-rich program of the Massillon Tigers, but again, they uh, need not think or worry about that any further as in this 2023 campaign in a absolutely hard-hitting Defensive dominant, 48 minutes. Maslin beats the Hoban Knights seven to two. 
to win the D2 state title. I call this an ice bath kind of game, Michael, because it's so physical, hard hitting, tackling, that when it's over, that's probably the only thing that can make you feel better, other than winning and putting a ring on your finger and calling yourself a state champion. Let's head down to Ashley Collins, who has the state championship winning Division II head coach, Nate Moore. Ashley. Thank you. Coach, congrats. A perfect season ending with this moment right here. It, it, did you think you were going to win this with one touchdown? I mean, I, we have a great defense. You know, I, I couldn't say that I didn't think that this was a possible scenario. Um, but, uh, I mean, what a performance by our defense. I mean, I don't know what the time of possession was. It felt like they were on the field the entire second half. We really couldn't get anything going offensively. And, God, did our guys play well. You said the mantra had been masculine against the world, and it certainly felt like that. This whole road here and what it meant and turning this stadium into Paul Brown and what it means right now for everyone. I mean, I mean first it's about our kids. We have unbelievable kids. Um, and they played their hearts out tonight, and our coaches – what a great job of preparing our guys. And then and how about the fans, the city of Maslin, uh, showing up tonight, cheering us on, being the 12th man. And, um, you know, it's unbelievable. Did you expect things to go this way, this moment? You know, you've been waiting for this. It's finally that, that, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> the water flying off you, a little bit cold. but just everything that went into this and finally and, and what it means especially for these seniors I mean it, it means a lot this means a lot to our community uh, first state title since 1970 and um, I'm just so happy that we're that this team was able to do it we we're able to do it for the city of Maslin because they deserve it congrats enjoy this one coach thank you so much For the first time in Maslin Tigers' glorious football history, our state champions. As we said a moment ago, six times state runners up, three in a row, 2018, 19, and 20, lost in state championship games. Ryan, when you think about it, 30 trips into the total playoff appearances. All right, here's here's Tim Street from the OHSAA to present the runners-up award to Akron Hope. To the last week of the season. But what you proved again this year is that Hoban football is not only one of the best teams in Northeast Ohio, but in the entire state of Ohio. And gentlemen, playing in the last game of the season for the eighth time in the last nine years, no other school in the state of Ohio has done that. So at this time, this is Bill Nye from the OHSA Board of Directors. It's my honor to give Akron Archbishop Hoban the state runner-up trophy for 2023. Congratulations. Rich, Coach Moore talked about how solid his defense is. They essentially pitched a shutout here to win this championship. Defensively, it was something that uh, Nate Moore talked about with us. He talked now, about with everybody who listened. He had a great belief, as we said during the game, that his defense, if they needed to, in essence, Keep the Hoban Knights off the board. He felt very confident that that's exactly what his defense would provide him. members Bill Nye and Glenn Gillespie as they present the Division II State Championship Trophy to the Tigers from Washington A lot of class here telling his players to take a knee and let Hoban get their flowers. So much emotion. Coach Moore. Both sides. 
Here's uh, Bo Rugg. Coach Moore, before the tournament era, Maslin, Washington, was the envy of every program across the country. You came here nine years ago with the purpose of getting to this game, to this moment. You have done something, and these seniors have done something that none of your predecessors have done in the last 50 years. You've won a state championship. It gives me great personal pleasure, Nate, to present you on behalf of our board of directors, all of our member schools, the 2023 Division II State Championship Trophy. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have another round of applause for your OHSAA Division II State Runners Up. It all spells 16 and 0, as in the 10 and 0 regular season, and now the 6 and 0 in the Division II State Playoff rounds for Nate Moore and his Maslin Tigers. What an incredible ride this has been, and now so. And all this just phenomenal history ride, Kavanaugh. Indeed, it's 2023 that they finally end all the disappointment and uh, the many years of being runner-up, being in the Final Four, but not able to win it all. That comes to an end now. First time ever state championship for Maslin Washington High School. You know, if we're candid about it, it's always been a point of uh, discussion between Maslin fans and other Maslin fans, and I guess there's no more discussion no. because of this team right here. And Michael, a hundred, you want to know how good Maslin's defense was? They had a hundred and Maslin, 125 yards of offense in the whole game. That's the fifth fewest by a state championship winning team and essentially pitched a shutout. Of course, you know, Hoban scored on a safety. Their defense didn't let up a point tonight. They were, for me, that's the MVP, is the Maslin Tiger defense. Without question. Incredibly gifted, but you still got to go out and take care of some of the uh, the top offenses as they have in all of uh, Division Two around the Buckeye State. All right, tonight's Alt Care Player of the Game brought to you by Alt Care Health Plans. Got to be the quarterback. What a sensational performance for Dewan Owens. Well, he was very good running the football uh, early, but you know, Coach Moore said it. Uh, they they just couldn't get anything going in the second half. When they did, it was because of Dewan Owens, and he did just enough to give his team a rest. And then, of course, victory formation. And Dewan Owens, he's got a bright future ahead of him on the field, but this is going to be a memory that he'll remember for the rest of his life. So there you have it, as you see. Uh, again, and uh, I think if you're a, a high school football fan of uh, any capacity, you're well aware of what the, the orange and black here in Northeast Ohio, and specifically Maslin, Ohio, has meant through years and years. I, Ryan, I'm sure, I'm talking about it this week with a lot of fans, I, and they're basically telling me, now, Rick, I, you're wrong. Maslin's won a state championship. No, no, they never had. Not until 15 minutes ago. And now, uh, those that uh, revere the orange and black, they'll get their opportunity to savor and celebrate just that a Division II state title for the Maslin Tigers. I want to remind you that Brett Hiltbrand and Matt DeRazio will continue the celebration. 
with our OHSAA championship postgame show immediately following the trophy presentations. That is right here on Spectrum News 1, your home for high school sports. Ryan Cavanaugh, always great to be with you, man. Uh, love kicking off this state championship weekend uh, here with the OHSAA. And when you and I, a lot of smiles for us when we knew last week that we had the Maslin Akron Hoban matchup tonight. And it uh, it certainly uh, gave everybody the reward that we thought it would. Well, it lived up to the expectations, not only that you and I had, but everybody else. And when you talk Maslin, you talk crowd. We did it all night. Fourth largest Division II finals crowd. And there's a reason for that. Certainly Hoban showed up as well, but I feel like there's not any lights on in Massillon right now because they're all inside this stadium. Now I would say that as apt. Partner, great job tonight as always. You know it's my pleasure, buddy. Love what you do and the way you analyze and uh, break it down. That's going to do it for us. Tonight's Division II Championship Game Final. The Akron Hoban Knights don't quite have enough. The Maslin Tigers with their first ever state championship. Maslin beats home in the final at 7-2. Tune in Friday, Division VI championship game. Versailles at Kirtland who started at 10-15 in the morning on Spectrum News 1. Now, for my partner Ryan Cavanaugh, Ashley Collins, our producer Mike Bachman, our director Mike Simons, all of the Spectrum 1 news crew, I'm Michael Regai. Know you enjoyed it. Good night from Tom Benson, Hall of Fame Stadium in Canton. Your evening on Spectrum News 1 is Ohio's source for local news that matters to you. We bring new perspectives and in-depth coverage of the day's biggest stories. We're here for you, sharing stories that inspire with news that keeps you informed and prepared for your tomorrow. Plus, our weather experts bring you your latest accurate neighborhood forecast every 10 minutes with our weather on the ones. Watch your evening on Spectrum News 1 weeknights starting at 4. Spectrum business is made to work just like your small business. Made to overcommit and overcome. Made to log in and ship out. Made to streamline productivity. Made to reassess, readapt, then relaunch. And made to do it all with fast, easy to use, ultra reliable internet, phone, and mobile services. All working together to connect every aspect of your business. We sold out in an hour. Nice work. You navigate one challenge after another, so you need a seamless network made to do the same. Spectrum Business, made to work. When I never graduated from high school, I realized I wanted to go back to school because I didn't want to work these back breaking jobs the rest of my life. With the help of my father and having my son, that was all the motivation that I needed to come back to school. I felt accomplished, it made me feel that I could take on whatever challenges life throws at you. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Weather can be beautiful, inconvenient, and at times, powerful. And it affects everything we do. At Spectrum News One, our weather experts update you with the information and the context you need so you can better plan your day. And we do it every 10 minutes. We're the calm in the storm. Weather on the ones on Spectrum News One, exclusively on Spectrum. And get your weather anytime on the new Spectrum News app. mean a lot to the city of Maslin. 24 is a big one. Zero was also a big number in the city of Maslin. And you can banish that forever. T-I-G-E-R-S, the Maslin Tigers, our state champions, their first in the playoff era 
of Ohio high school football. Welcome into OHSAA Championship Game Day, brought to you by Baldwin Wallace. I'm Brett Hilprand, Otterbein legend, football legend Matt DeRazio here to my left. Uh, it's it's an amazing thing. We've been doing this show for a long time, and we've we've been here to be able to kind of write or be part of those first chapters of of history being written in Ohio high school postseason football. This is one that we've always kind of wondered when we would be able, if we were even going to be able to kind of talk about it and discuss it and witness it. We were talking even before this game, leading up to it over the, the, the course of this week, that it kind of felt like this was the year. It just kind of felt like it, especially with what we saw from that Massillon defense throughout the entire postseason. They go out and get it done 7-2 which is an outrageous scoreline in the Division II state championship. Congratulations to, to Nate Moore, the entire coaching staff, the players, and the city of Massillon as well. History, a fabulous, fabulous victory for them. Yeah, Brett, I, defense wins championships has yeah. always been said. There, there's definitely the case tonight here for Massillon. Knocking on the door time and time again, you're wondering, are they going to be able to kick it in and make it happen? And there was no doubt tonight. It, it's funny because basically pitching a shutout defensively to a you know an Akron Hoban team that scores lots and lots of points and is used to scoring lots of points and winning uh, and really shutting them down but to me it wasn't just the defense it was eliminating mistakes no turnovers you know holding on to the football making the right uh, decisions limited penalties if any and even recovering on a fake punt that wasn't uh, uh, a successful one late in the game just never giving up and always believing they were going to find a way. And to me, the big win against St. Ed's yeah. in the regular season may have been the tipping point of, hey, we can do this, this is our year, and they never look back. That defense did some special things throughout the entirety of this season, and they go 16-0, and which is another bit of a, and a little bit of a wrinkle to the history that they were able to achieve. But it was the, the toughness, the physicality, it, it just kind of had an extra gear from some of those Massillon teams that we've seen reach this point in the past and come up just a little bit short. But it just, that, that little bit, that 5% more, it just felt like it looked different. And obviously, the final score of this game certainly proves that to, uh, to a T. Our Andy Baskin caught up with uh, Dorian Pringle, who his head coach, Nate Moore, called him maybe the greatest player he has ever coached in a Massillon uniform. He was all over the place, 14 tackles in this one for a guy who we weren't even sure if he was going to play in this game. He's now a state champion. To Canton with Andy and Dorian. Dorian, what a game. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you. Talk about the history you just made tonight. Well, I'm happy for my whole team right now. The whole town has come and support us every game. And I'm just very blessed right now. I'm going to go celebrate with my team. Everybody's excited, as you can see right now. First one in history. We make a history over here. Best team in the state. Defensively, you guys were able to do it all season tonight. Man, you did it again. Yeah, we do it all year, man. We just do what our coaches say, and it just ends out. It ends up like this. We, it was a close game. Def, both defenses was really good. We just came out on top. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Fourteen thousand six hundred and eighty some people at Paul at, at not Paul Brown Tiger Stadium. I've done this twice now today <laughs> at Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium in Canton, witnessing this one. And it certainly sounded like twelve to thirteen of those fourteen grand. Uh, or wearing orange and black and sporting some form of OB uh, in the stands. It was everything that you expect uh, whenever you see Maslin, uh, you know, take the field. But there was like a little bit of an extra edge too. The fans were bringing it, and they they got to see a little bit of history tonight. Yeah, and you, you hear you hear a, a couple interviews so far. The first thing everybody's talking about is the community, yeah. the folks in the crowd, the the support that they've received along the way. And, and once again, we talk about knocking on the door year after year. There's never been a letdown. There's never been doubt. It's always been belief. It's just a matter of time when that's going to happen. And, and tonight was their night. And, I, and I, I bring it up on the defensive side. I also bring it up the pressure that was applied to Hoban and the mistakes that they, they made. Yeah. It's not just some of those are, uh, you know, self-inflicted. Other ones are because of the pressure that's been applied uh, from Mass on the defense side of the ball. Five fumbles for Hoban. They lost one of them. One interception, nine penalties for 68 yards. And it's probably not fair to say that huge play at the end is a drop in the end zone. It was a tough play there. 
but uh, uh, you know, an opportunity to, to, to make, some happen, make something happen there, and it kind of just slips through the fingers of the Hoban wide receiver. But yeah, and, and speaking of pressure, I think whenever we talk about the, the, the Massillon football program, capital P program, the Go Tigers, and the OB uh, stuffed animals to babies being born in Massillon, and the whole kind of engine, the machinations of this huge kind of glacial thing, it's a lot for these kids and I use that word purposely, it's a lot for these kids to get their arm around, the indoor facility and everything, that there's a, a good amount of pressure for these guys every single time they start two-a-days, when they're in the weight room in the off-season, and for them to finally, after going 0-6 in state championship games, to finally get over that hump. In my mind, it feels like the floodgates are officially open, and now it's going to get very, very real in Division Two as time goes on. But it's a, it's a special thing for us to witness just because of all the football that we've managed to watch uh, at this level and then throughout all the postseason, really, uh, over the last six or seven years. It's a special thing to kind of witness. And, Brett, how about the opponent they did it against? I know, I right? mean, this is, this is an akron Hoban team that, that has beat them twice in this game, wondering, hey, can we overcome, you know, the Knights? Uh, and, and you're thinking, you know, we're close, but can we do it? And this was their night. And, and like I said before, I mean, and you, and you heard Dorian say, hey, we might be the best team in the state. And I think he's referring to the fact that St. Ed's is in the finals. If they can pull that off against Springfield tomorrow, they're thinking, hey, we've beat everybody uh, in front of us and, and, and no one's better than us. And, and then, you know, for him to mention the community right after that, I think they all are feeling the sense of this is the best program in the state. Maslin's defense only giving up double digit points four times this year. Valdosta, Georgia, in the opening game of the season. Mansfield Senior scored 10 points in a 51-10 game. That was week three. St. Ed's gets 13 in a 15-3 game, and then Harding scored 14 in a 48-14 game. So they really hadn't been challenged for the most part outside of that Ed's game and the, and the game against the team from Georgia. But there's pressure to that, especially as you build to everything in the state championship game, and then you go up against an opponent in Hoban that's gotten the better of you at that level, at that point in the postseason a handful of times. It's a special win for Nate Moore, who joins Tom Lombardo as the only other coach in Ohio high school football history to win two state championships at two different schools. Lombardo, obviously, with Lake Catholic and St. Edward. What's the other team for Nate Moore? Do you remember? Cincinnati? Oh, oh yeah. Come on. I know. Come on, hook me up. I got gotcha. you. It's Cincinnati on the South, by the way. <laughs> I knew it. The, I knew it. So a special thing for Nate Moore, who, by the way, earlier this year surpassed Paul Brown as the winningest coach in Massillon in football history. So a couple milestones for him this year. He certainly cements himself as a Massillon football legend, and that sentence in and of itself carries a good bit of weight. Dewan Owen. Is Owens is the quarterback for Maslin, and I thought ran a really tough game, carried the ball 14, 15 times for 80-some yards. He doesn't get the touchdown. That goes to Mylan Lennox, but our Andy Baskin caught up with Dewan after this championship win. Unbelievable. How does it feel to be a part of history? It feels great, man. You know, we worked our butt off during the offseason. I'm glad it paid off. All right, when you go back and watch this game, what was the most important play in this game? Because, I mean, the offense was the offense, but the defense carried you tonight, and, I mean, look what's up there. It was definitely the last play with Dorian Pringle breaking that fourth down up. It was huge. It was huge. That was the biggest play. All right. You know, to be 16-0 is something super special. How were you guys able to do it? You know, just the off-season training, you know, going, you know, with the brothers, you know, it's just, it was off-season training. That's what it was. Defense, defense, defense. But you guys came up with a big touchdown early. Walk me through the touchdown. Uh, it was, we had our heavy package out, and we just ran inside zone, and our running back found a hole and hit that. What about that crowd you guys had here tonight? I know. I love it, man. I love every second of it. Congratulations. It kind of begs the question now, and, and, and you love to see, you know, a guy kind of power through. It looked like, you know, Dewan kind of got maybe nicked up there in the first half and still managed to kind of gut, gut out what was a gritty performance at quarterback. But I kind of wonder a little bit of what, what it now means for Maslin going forward as they enter now uh, all the other Stark County schools that have won state championships, Canton, Central Catholic, and McKinley obviously being the two at the top of that list. I think Aquinas, yeah, Aquinas is the other one from uh, the 80s. So do you think, Matt, that it, that it kind of means like 
it's a it's on now that the first one is the toughest one to win so to speak and now two three four is is kind of there for the taking as time goes on well you like to think that but you also know how difficult it is right. to win a state championship i don't care where you are what division what state you're in ever a lot has to go right uh, and, and the one thing that was just mentioned there it was the off-season training. When do you start to be, yeah. begin that training? When do you start to believe uh, and, and get right? And, and, and that's when you do it. But, I mean, to say the floodgates are open, it's really tough to say that because of everything that has to go right along the way. Yeah, and it's not like Hoban is going anywhere. Avon gave Hoban everything they could yeah. handle in the state semifinals. They've been on the doorstep for a long time. Avon Lake, especially. LaSalle down in Cincinnati. Winton Woods down in Cincinnati. They're incredible D2 programs. Toledo Central Catholic, if they get bumped up from D3, which we'll see them in a little bit. In that, in that state championship game, if TCC comes up into D2, they become a factor no matter what division they're in. D2 is obviously loaded, but it does feel like, for me, it, it, that once you get up over the hump, and, and essentially it was like kind of the last box that Maslin needed to check in terms of experience that you want these players to kind of have, what does it mean to go up in a state championship game and see that game out and win it? Now that you've done that, game on D2? Well, I, I think it, what happens is is you have to stack classes back to back to back. That's you true. have to experience that. And then once that standard has been set, the classes behind you are the ones that are going to try to achieve that. That's where the program comes from. And so when, when you experience this, all those underclassmen that got a taste of it want to taste again and continue you know, the, the, the trend of winning state championships. But once again, very difficult. Every coach would say that. Every player would say that. And you celebrate the ones you get, and then you work your butt off to get to the next one. Adonis Vaughn is a state champion with the Maslin Tigers. He's with our Andy Baskin in, in Canada. I mean, you guys had so many big games going into this thing. This one was tight all the way down to the wire. Walk me through it. Uh, you know, man, it was just hard for our massive football. Uh, offense, you know, we were moving a lot real slow. Defense, we were just having our struggles. We were just trying to find a way to uh, put that past us and get the dub. When you guys were working out way before August, you're in the weight room being undefeated in 16-0. Was that ever something that you guys thought about in the beginning? That's all we thought about since January. We've been working hard in the weight room. Coach Sue beginning us right. They just had to talk to us about how Coach Sue and Coach Moore found a plan for us to get better every and every day. And that's what happened. And we ended up going 16-0 winning that state championship. How does it feel to be the first team to get a state championship in this format for your school? So much rich tradition, so much history, but you were the first. How does that feel? It feels it feels amazing. It's everything to us. You know, it's amazing for these five people massing to be behind us every step of the way. Uh, just it's, it's unbelievable, man. And defensively tonight, you guys were nothing short of spectacular. Yes, we were. We were amazing. What was the game plan defensively? Stop the run? I mean, uh, what was it? Just play hard football, play massive football, play to our level. No one else is us. Congratulations. A couple other players that I'd like to get their names out there for making huge plays. Mike Wright was outrageous in the center of the defense at that kind of nose tackle kind of hybrid position. They move him around a little bit on the defensive line, but he was outstanding, disrupted. Basically, it felt like every play he was on the field. Chase Bond blocks the punt in the first half. That leads to the touchdown for Maslin. Vito McConnell with an interception at the end of the first half as well. Three guys who made plays um, on the defensive side of the ball for the Tigers. Let's put a bow on it. Maslin City of the Champions. And finally, you can actually say that in terms of playoff year titles. Um, but it, what does it mean, I think, it, on, on a singular level? Like right now, is it relief, joy, combination of the two that, that all of these fans are kind of that, – that have hoped for so much and come up short over the last however many years to finally get over that hump? Right. I think a, a, a relief is a, is a decent word for you yeah. to pull out there because the standard is so high and the pressure is so much that – at some point when, when you know, the accomplishment happens, like the state championship, there is a sense of relief. There is kind of a, whew, you know, that, that weight is off our shoulders. But then there is this, the moment of celebration. Hey, all this hard work paid off. This group in this locker room, everybody came together. Everybody that drove here and supported us all, you know, that all adds up to where we are today and, and, and celebrating that championship. So I think it's that combination. Mm -hmm. But I, certainly you, you got to envision parades and celebrations yeah. for 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 several days and, and maybe even to the weeks here for, for this community. Exhale yes. and enjoy. <laughs> yes. and, and what a way to get the, the 2023 state championship started here. Fantastic to, to write a little bit of history this evening.
and then we kick it right back off tomorrow morning and then once again on Saturday we go D6 D3 D1 Friday and then 754 in uh, all day Saturday love to see the Hornets and Versailles the Hornets of Kirtland and Versailles rematching once again in Division 5 weather going to be a factor in that game as well Keep your eyes peeled for that one. Bishop Watterson, Toledo Central Catholic. That one's going to be fabulous. Uh, and, and, a, and an opportunity to, to showcase some incredible talent at the Division Three level. And then the three-peat on tap for Eds. And the only you know, team standing in their way is the team that you know they beat the previous two times. Springfield, Maurice Douglas, the 12 seed, the most unlikely of postseason runs in OHSAA playoff era history. Mo Doug has the Springfield, Springfield back in the title game for the Division I, the third time, part three, of the Division I state championship. That one kicks off 7.30 tomorrow night. We'll get into the Saturday games when we kind of run things through on t tomorrow. Three good ones on tap on Saturday as well. Anything stand out to you for all, all I know is the weekend has started, and it started with a bang. Folks like me love offensive fireworks and lots of touchdowns, but how can you not enjoy a defensive battle the way it went down tonight by two great programs? Best 7-2 game I've ever, <laughs> ever. seen in, in, in my entire career. Absolutely <laughs> fabulous. Paul Brown, if you're watching, they did it, my man. Maslin, City of Champions, 24, take the zero and put it in the trash. One and many more to come, I'm sure. Go Tigers. We'll see you in a moment.